Well, Canalia, that long kick. Canalia is a more of a finesse player, short passes on the ground. If, they, if that means they're trying to exploit the New York right winger who plays out near that far touchline, we'll have to watch that. This is the number one draft choice in the North American Soccer League. Number 15, Glenn Myernick. Ken Cooper controls. Sends it over to Steve Petcher, last year's Rookie of the Year in the NASL. Fine defensive backs for the Dallas Tornado now. This is Petcher wearing that cast on his right wrist. Across midfield, looking for O'Hare, headed instead by Dillon. And controlled now by Steve Hunt. This is Dmitrievich, who was one of the players who had a fitness test this morning, evidently passed that. Steve Hunt, left puts it back. Far side. New York controlling once again. This is Toppinch. Right side to Canalia. Canalia being marked by Steve Petcher. And it's across. Nope. Canalia kicks it back and New York controls. Paul? I was just going to remark on the good job that Petcher did on Canalia there. He uh, pushed his leg across and he got the ball away from Canalia. Not easy to do. Canalia. And it's across the touchline. New York throw in. Kicked away by Tony Ballinger. New York will throw it in once again. Just underway, 43 minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. Cloudy, overcast day in New York. Number nine. New York controls. Back to midfield. Dillon. Almost into the danger zone, not quite. Dimitri Evich. Back to Keith Eddy, Cosmos captain. Long chip. And Ken Cooper will take it on one bounce. Paul? Well, I'm trying to spot a pattern developing in the play because it's very difficult this early in the game. But I must say, Dallas had a lot of players back. In other words, they drew forward positions back to defend on this. Foul called on John O'Hare. New York quickly controls. This is Pelé. Dimitri Evich taken away by Dallas. Alan Hinton, newly acquired from Great Britain, loses control, and New York gets it back. The Cosmos on the attack. That's Topic. This is Canalia. Canalia just outside the penalty box. Crossing. Steve Hunt left foot. Can't control. It's across the touchline. Good move by the Cosmos. Dangerous attacking move down the right flank. Canalia's center on target. And Steve Hunt, I'm afraid, not doing too well on his volley. That's Tony Ballinger, young rookie from New Jersey. Out of bounds, across the touchline, and Dallas will get it back. 41 minutes, 36 seconds remaining. First half, just underway on a gloomy overcast day from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. George Lay, Dallas in red. The Lay. New York playing games now and keeping yeah. it well back. Paul. Yeah, some fine control. It's a question of possession here. As long as you've got the ball, of course, the opponents can't do anything. This sort of possession may, may look sort of fruitless, but eventually you find a man open, which is exactly what they've done here, Topic. This is Topic on the attack. Distributes it out to the right side, just near the penalty box. Crosser looking for Pelay. Cooper's up and makes the stop. But Dallas controls. Pelay kicks it away. What a move. And Petcher gets it out of trouble. I think the referee will call a foul on that. I don't think uh, Pelay is allowed to get away with that. <laughs> Take a look at it again. There's with the ball. Looking where to kick it. Pelay puts his leg up. That is a foul. Free kick, Dallas. Free kick for Dallas. Ken Cooper will control. 40 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Glenn Myron. Across this field, looking for O'Hare, but taken instead you by Keith Eddy of New on York. On the screen, we've got Keith Eddy and Keith Eddy only. He's playing very deep, almost, I would say, two-thirds of the way back into his own half. Canalia, taken now by Jim Ryan. Marked in Pelé control. Pelé, great pass by Pelé, but it's taken and knocked away by Steve Petcher. Pretty good defensive job by Petcher then, Paul. Fine defensive job by Petcher. I think Pelé would have wanted to get a little more speed on that pass to get it past. This is Neil Cohen, looking upfield. Now, finds O'Hare, O'Hare, but it's headed back by New York. Cosmos control. At midfield. Charlie Aitken to Pillay. Steve Hunt and Pillay. Mike Dillon, back to Pillay. 
Right side, and here comes New York again. Into the danger zone. They've got a three-on-five situation. A shot. Myronick knocks it back. Chested the ball away. Pelay. From 50 doodle from the Black Pearl. How about that? Oh, beautiful stuff. Canalia. Canalia with a shot right at Cooper. And Kenny makes an easy save. From Giant Stadium in Meadowlands, New Jersey, this is Dallas Tornado Soccer. A brewmaster's dream. Crystal clear water. From the country of 1100 Springs, this spring water brews a Texas tradition. Pearl. Pearl beer brings 1100 Springs. Straight from the heart of Texas. The water here makes Pearl beer. First in the heart of Texas. No score in our game. We've got 38 minutes and 34 seconds. Tornado on the attack. Allen Hinton, left foot. Sends it into the corner. Ballinger. A near miss by Jim Ryan. Very dangerous move by Dallas there. Ryan was only inches off heading that ball, and he did not have a defender tied on him. That's a bad sign for New York. 38-16 remaining. Scoreless first half. This is Pelé for New York. Being marked by Roy Turner. No foul called on charge. Ray, and here comes the Tornado. John O'Hare, number nine. Marked by Dmitrievich. Play on. New York has it. Charlie Aitken. Steve Hunt from Aston Villa, just acquired this year. Steve Hunt, he was signed as a winger, actually, and now New York, are, that's a forward position, in other words, an attacking position. New York are using him in midfield, where he can be a little more creative, where he'll see more of the ball, and he's come through very well in the first three games. Pelé distributes out to the right side. This is Topic, marked from behind by George Lay. Topic, doing a good job of ball control. Just inside the danger zone area. Fine interception there by John O'Hare, another forward who's come back to help on his defense. Mike Dillon, right side to Keith Eddy. Cosmos captain, crossing pass, taken by Dallas. Neil Cohen, wearing number two. Jim Ryan. 37 minutes and four seconds remaining. Scoreless game. Kevin Hewley, back to Myronick. Back to Culey, into Cosmos country now. Alan Hinton. Myronick, Tornado moving into the danger zone area, but it's taken away by Mike Dillon of New York, and here come the Cosmos. Dillon, right side. Across the offside line, 35 yards out. This is Topic. But Neil Cohen heads it out of danger, but Pelé has it, a shot! Wide to the left. Paul see. Gardner, let's look at it again. We watched this ball come over. This is Topic with his center. Now, Cohen here does not do the wisest thing. He heads it back across the middle. There's Pelé, and his shot is going to go, well, what, a couple of feet wide there? Not too happy to head that ball back across the middle. Should be headed out towards the flanks. Cohen back to Kenny Cooper. New York, I think, uh, having the advantage here in the early stages, I Paul. think so, and I think you could count that that we've just seen as a, as a clear opportunity uh, to score. They can take it. They may regret that later on. Roy Turner doing a nice job of control for the Tornado. Alan Hinton down the left side looking for John O'Hare. O'Hare, but it's uh, kicked away by New York. Tony Ballinger gets it back for Dallas. Neil Cohen, young Dallasite. Out to Steve Petcher, right at the danger zone. Kevin Culey. Dmitrievich, nice job defensively by Dmitrievich, but Dallas gets it back. Into the center, Steve Hunt for New York. He's very quick at nipping in there. Good interception. Fine pass out to Topic. Here's Pelé. Topic's on the right side. Watch Pelé work now. Give and go. This is Steve Hunt. Pelé has it. Pelé doing his magic once again. Glenn Myronick took the ball away from him. This is Canalia. And things settle down just a bit. Good New York move. Uh, Canale right at the end there. Tried to back heel the ball and failed to do. Here's Pelé. Uh, a give and go with Canale with the second part of it. And a turn. Now that is an incredible turn under any circumstances. On this slippery Astro turf, I think you've got to have muscles made of steel to stay upright when you're doing that. Dallas has it back. 34-41 remaining. Scoreless first half. Keeley misses. Steve Hunt for New York, number 11. 
Canalia chases it back and sends it safely back to Keith Eddy. For Pillay. Neil Cohen, Ballinger will send it back to Ken Cooper. Cooper, Steve Petcher. 34-16 remaining, first half. Vern Lundquist and Paul Gardner from Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Tony Ballinger. Mrs. Alan Hinton, Keith Eddy has it for New York. Justin White, nice pass by Eddy. This could be dangerous. Steve Hunt and Cooper comes up to say, we have, I think, a penalty shot not, coming up. Not a penalty kick. In, indirect free kick. Obstruction here, running a... You see, he's not trying to play the ball. He's trying to push that man off the ball. The referee has given a free kick to New York, but it'll be an indirect free kick inside the penalty area. In other words, the Dallas players will be allowed to form a wall. That is Topic, the man who was sort of brushed off the ball there. He's, he's getting up. He'll be all right. The situation is still dangerous for Dallas. There's, there's their defensive wall. It, that's trying to block off part of the goal. Paul, you might explain why this is not a penalty kick. No, a pen penalty kick is a one-on-one. -on -one. This, this has a wall. Here's Pelé's attempt. Steve Hunt. A shot. Still in trouble. Myronick comes back and controls. It'll be a corner kick for New York. No, we go back to that penalty kick kick a one-on-one -on -one just the goalkeeper to beat i beg your pardon but on this now we do not have a corner kick we have a free kick there must have been an infringement there by one of the new york forwards dallas have the ball it did appear that uh Myronick kicked it out okay no score in our game 33 14 from giant stadium in meadowlands new jersey this is dallas tornado soccer hi i'm johnny rutherford if you get the feeling you're driving in a destruction derby Drop by a participating CarQuest service station or garage for new shock absorbers, where you see this banner. Right now, Monroe Grippers are only $4.95 each. Or pick yours up at a CarQuest auto parts store. You get a brand you can trust at a savings and a smoother, safer ride. At Duncanville Automotive, Jay's Auto Parts and Metroplex Auto Supply. No score in the game. We've got 32-34 remaining in the first half. Glenn Myronick for Dallas, number 15. Tornado with only one near-scoring opportunity thus far. New York with two or three. Tony Ballinger, number 17. Tornado still in control. John O'Hare. Nice pass by O'Hare out to Jimmy Ryan. Ryan near the far touch line. Being marked by Charlie Aiken. Headed out by Mike Dillon. Tornado controls. Rain starts to fall once again. Alan Hinton and Chef Messing makes the stop. Good, solid cross from Alan Hinton. He can really put a foot into the ball. We heard that thump all the way up here in the press box, and the ball really traveled beautifully. You know, he scored a goal in that first game against Tampa Bay, Paul, and it was just a marvelously powerful shot to the left foot of him. One, of one of the kicks we were talking about earlier in the game. Good, solid, top of the foot on the ball, meeting it really firmly. Steve Hunt. Nifflin, back to Hunt, 31-35, remaining first half. Keith Eddy, Cosmos captain, being marked by Kevin Culey. Right side to Mike Dillon across the 35-yard marker, Paul. Interesting point there, Dillon left free to roam out on the right. Dillon is actually a center back, his position in moving out on the right there, and nobody going with him from the Dallas side, which gave him an awful lot of room there. Number three, George Lay, corner kick now. Good scoring opportunity. These corner kicks can be very, very dangerous to defend against. They can indeed. It's a set position. New York can move a lot of players up. There they are, crowding into the box there. But the commanding figure of Cooper just leaps up and plucks that ball out of the air. No problem this time. And Cooper with that long, accurate throw out to Roy Turner, longtime Tornado veteran. This is Turner. But it's taken away by Dmitrievich. Here's Pelé. Pelé, 35 yards out. Craftily looking to his right. Oh, what a pass by Pelé. And Cooper with the save. You see all the Dallas players with their hands up in the air there. They were appealing for offside, which now there. There's Canalia running through. Cooper is out, off his line very quickly. Saves with his feet, in fact. Tornado on the attack now. 30 and 30 minutes, 24 seconds remaining. The rain is really starting to fall now. Neil Cohen, number two for Dallas. That's Jim Ryan, number seven. Pass over to Ryan. Ryan, center of the field to Tony Ballinger, young rookie. And that'll go across the touchline. It'll be New York throw-in. 
don't think the rain that's absolutely pouring down now can account for that rather bad pass by Bellinger there. He seemed to slip as he pushed it. And of course, um, going back to golf again, if you slip as you're making your shot, the ball is not going to go where you want it to. North American Soccer League action. The Tornado 2-0 for the year. New York Cosmos are 2-1. They defeated Rochester last week 2-0 while Dallas was defeating St. Louis on the road 3-0. New York across the midfield stripe. Hunt and Cohen. And we've got the foul call. 29-36 remaining in the first half from Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands of New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Hi, I'm Ken Cooper. And while I stay on top of the game, I want to tell you about a great soccer ball offer from Dr. Pepper. You can get an official Dr. Pepper soccer ball like this one for only $8.95 plus six Dr. Pepper bottle cap liners. Get your soccer ball by mailing $8.95 plus six bottle cap liners to Dr. Pepper Soccer, P.O. Box 29223, Dallas, Texas 75229. Get your soccer ball today from the most original soft drink ever, Dr. Pepper. Bert Lundquist and Paul Gardner from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Next home game for the Tornado will be next Saturday night against San Jose. San Jose won their first game last night, defeating Seattle 2-0. That'll be 8 o'clock at Ownby Stadium. Rain really starting to pour. Dallas has it. This is John O'Hare, number 9. Kevin Culey. Nice pass for Jim Ryan, but a good defensive play by Charlie Aiken. Headed back, and Keith Eddy, number 5, will let it go, and Chef Messi. New York goalkeeper, though confronted by Jim Ryan, sends it out. Whoops. Not much doubt, Paul. I don't think so. <laughs> no, uh, Ryan, isn't it? Yes. Ryan, number seven, normally a right winger, over on the left. May I have this dance? So Ryan is sort of waving, saying, well, I didn't really mean it, and I'm sure he didn't. It is coming down in torrents right now. Looks like we've got a curtain of rain in front of us here. little conflagration at midfield. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a free kick. As Bobby's running in and pushing, oh, pushing quite violently, in fact. There. Bob Smith, number 12 for New York, and Tony Ballinger, number 17 for Dallas. The Tornado interesting thing about Dallas. Bobby Smith is that he was actually signed by El Miller for Philadelphia three or four years ago. Great pass by Mifflin, but George Lay is there, number three for Dallas. And Steve Fetcher, number four, has it now. No score, 27 minutes, 30 seconds remaining first half. Get a good view of Steve Petcher. Rookie of the year last year in the North American Soccer League. New York easily controlling. That was Keith Eddy. Ramon Mifflin. Dmitrievich. Vito Dmitrievich from Yugoslavia number three. Steve Hunt from Aston Villa of England just acquired this year. This is Roy Turner from England who's been with the Tornado for a number of years. Jim Ryan into the danger zone area. Out on the left side to Alan Hinton. Hinton fighting off the rain. This is Kevin Culey. Culey with a shot, but it's blocked by Mike Dillon. Has another shot at Messing with a fine save by Chef Messing. Beautiful save by Messing. His shot coming through here. Now he gets his second by with a definite handball there, which the referee seemed not to notice. Here's Pelé at the far end of the field. Pelé can't quite beat Cooper. Chips it off wide to the right side. Interesting contrast there for what happened down at the other end where the shot was low and hard and blocked by Messing. When Pelé broke through under similar circumstances, he did not blast it low. He tried to get it over the goalkeeper. 26 minutes remaining in the first half. From the Meadowlands in New Jersey, this is Dallas Tornado Soccer. How do you get oil from beneath a sea this wild? The people of Phillips Petroleum have an answer. Echo Fist, a man-made island so technologically advanced it has opened a new era in offshore oil production. Producing oil where it couldn't be produced before, then turning it into fine products for your car. At Phillips Petroleum, we have a word for it. Phillips Petroleum is the performance company. Dallas. 25 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the first half. We have no score, two near scoring opportunities, one for the Tornado, one for New York. Just moments ago, before we Broke away. We have no score, though, and the rain continues to fall here at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford. Ramon Mifflin lets it go by, and it's taken by Alan Hinton. Long pass right side for Jim Ryan. Number seven, headed away instead by Charlie Aitken. This is Steve Hunt, number 11 for New York. Nice bit of dribbling, and here's Hunt with Neil Cohen. 
And we've got the foul call. Similar foul to the one we had in the penalty area earlier on, playing the man and not the ball, sort of pushing him aside and letting the ball run. You're not allowed to do that in soccer. Free kick New York for later things. There he, there he goes, pushing him off the ball. Corner kick for New York as it was uh, knocked across the goal line by Dallas, last touch by a Dallas player. And this is Ramon Mifflin with the corner kick. Keep in mind, those of you who have not watched that much soccer, that these corner kicks can be terrific scoring opportunities. Pelé, header. Another one. Tipped over the goal. It'll be a goal kick, Dallas. Corner kick like that coming in, going back to the type of kicks. The ball player taking the kick can put spin on the ball, kicking round the ball, and he can curve it away from the goalkeeper or into the goalkeeper. That was curved away from the goalkeeper. Pelé jumping up the head. It. Not too good a, a header, and um, the final header was equally unproductive, landing on top of the net. 24-13 remaining in the scoreless first half. Dallas controlling now near the 35-yard offside marker. Inside it now, about 25 yards out. Allen hit right-footed shot this time, but Mike Dillon with a nice defensive job. Hinton gets it back. Bob Smith gets in the way for New York, Dmitrievich then controls. Here's Smith once again. Bob Smith, number 12. Palais. Turner. And New York again controls. Ramon Mifflin right at the midfield stripe, out of the left wing. Steve Hunt, number 11. Hunt has Charlie Aiken coming down the left side, but settles instead. It's a give and go, and Hunt can't get it back, and Ballinger takes it for the tornado, number 17. This is Kevin Culey, number 10. And Neil Cohen, number 2. He'll go back safely to Ken Cooper and draw the ire of the crowd. The booze of the crowd. Of course, if you see the New York players doing that, you won't get any boos. It's all right for the home team, but of course, it's absolutely disgraceful for the away team to do it. 0-0 <laughs> zero, zero game in the rain in New Jersey. Tony Ballinger, number 17. That was a good move by Ryan, letting the ball run like that, but unfortunately, no, no, none of his own teammates had sort of figured out that that's what he was going to be. Otherwise, there would have been somebody running behind him to take that ball. Mike Dillon, number 20, Pelé, number 10. Nice tackle by Roy Turner, but... Uh, a little too vigorous, yes. I'm afraid. Free kick, New York. Now, on these free kicks, the opposing players, the players of the opposing team, in this case, Dallas, are supposed to be 10 yards away. They weren't, but they took the kick anyway. And oftentimes, they, they never do quite get 10 yards back, do they, Paul? No, it's only when it's within scoring distance, 25 yards out, that the team taking the kick insists they get 10 yards back. Under those circumstances, they're more interested in taking the quick, quick play. Number two, Neil Cohen for Dallas. Glenn Myrnick, number 15. Roy Turner, back to Cohen. Looks like a game of keep away right now. Here's Cohen. Whoops. Mifflin for New York. Again, I'm, I'm putting these that, that, that miscontrol there down to this extremely slippery ball because it really is so wet out there. Canalian, watch him work. Looking for Filet. Steve Hunt, number 11, just outside the penalty box. Has Filet with him. Here comes Roy Turner, number six for Dallas. Left-footed shot. And Canalia, no, oh, no, he just did wide to the right. Canalia with a bit of magic on the right side just about had Cooper whipped, Paul. I want to point out on Steve Hunt's center here, that's a curling ball. See how that lured the goalkeeper out? He couldn't get to it. There's Canalia trying a scissor kick just wide to the right. A beautiful center by Hunt, though. Curling ball bringing the goalkeeper out and then keeping him halfway. New York again controls. Number five, the captain, Keith Eddy. 21 minutes remaining, scoreless first half. Dmitrievich, number three. John O'Hare for Dallas tried to take it, but couldn't, and Keith Eddy has it now, number five for New York. Headed away by Jim Ryan of Dallas. New York still in control, and Mike Dillon will go back and control it. We've got 20 minutes and 59 seconds remaining as the rain continues to fall. From the Meadowlands in New Jersey, this is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Roundup. It's a nice word for long days sitting in a hard saddle and long nights sleeping on the hard ground. But now comes Miller time, and those are beautiful words for the time when you head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you got the time, we got the beer, Miller We are back with just over 20 minutes remaining. Ken Cooper will get it. No score in the ball game. 
several near opportunities. You know, I wonder on that uh, attempted scissor kick ball by Canale, if he, indeed he didn't slip when he I tried. I think he probably did, because that's a kick where initially all your weight is on one foot and the other foot is swinging viciously through the air. And of course, if you do slip, you're going to take the sort of somersault that he took. Spectacular, but uh, not very good in soccer terms. We'll go across the touchline, and last touch by New York, and we have a Dallas player down at midfield. It was a collision with... Uh, Alan Hinton, number 11. Collision with Bobby Smith, who certainly, uh, how can I put this, he's certainly the most vigorous of the Cosmos players. We'll check on Alan's condition, but first, with 1953, we have a scoreless game from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Hager Expandomatic Slacks from Sanger Harris keep you comfortable in those touchy situations. We've never met, but I love your slacks. Hi, baby. What's the score? Hager Expandomatic Slacks. With the deep inside elastic waistband that bends and stretches with you. See them now at Sanger Harris. Why don't we sit this one out? Alan Hinton is up. He's just fine. And New York will control rather than Dallas. New York throw in. Topic. But kicked away safely by George Lay. And we've got foul call on New York. Yeah, that was a handball. Eddie tried the ball, bounced out much higher than he thought it was going to, and he used his hand to control it. Free kick to Dallas. Alan Hinton will take the free kick just outside the offside line. That's 35 yards away from the goal. See what kind of a kick this is again, Vern, whether this is a, a long high or a curling low. Just take a look at the type of kick here. Very low, very curling, and, and not too accurate. By New York. <laughs> Tony Ballinger gets it back. Ballinger, number 17. Sends it forward just outside. Shot is taken, and the save is made by Messer. Oh, the goalkeeper's nightmare. A deflected shot. The goalkeeper commits himself going one way. The shot comes in. It's deflected. And on this turf, no way he's going to recover. Shep Messing did very well to smother that. Dimitrievich, number three. Belay. Roy Turner will be shadowing him all day long, wearing number six. Taken away. Nice steal made by John O'Hare. O'Hare drops it back, lays it off for Culey. Culey on the wing to Jim Ryan, number seven. Tornado with an opportunity now, but it's an errant pass. Nope, Alan Hinton has it. Let's see as he winds up, and it's deflected. It'll be a corner kick for the Dallas Tornado. Very impressed with Hinton shooting. Uh, Smith went for the ball in the far side of the area that the New York fullback didn't get it and uh, went through to Hinton. Powerful shot blocked by Dillon. This will be the first corner kick for the Tornado. It'll be taken on the far side by Alan Hinton. Curving kick, but headed out by Bob Smith. Pelé chests it and has control. Myrnick will intercept for Dallas, and the Tornado controls as Myrnick heads to his left. Topic marking him. And it's across the touchline. It'll be a New York throw in. Nice move by Myrnick there. Very impressed with Myrnick so far. Uh, Pelé booted that ball out very quickly. Canalia was quick to move to it, but Myrnick was even quicker. You see Roy Turner. He's going to be right by Pelé's side all afternoon. New York has control with 17.48 remaining in the scoreless first half. Mike Dillon, number 20 for New York. Being marked by O'Hare. Tackle is made by Ballinger, but the foul is called on Tony Ballinger. Yeah. A little bit of pushing on Ramon Mifflin there. Now then, what have we got here? The referee is annoyed with something. There is a yellow card warning. That must have been something that was said to the referee. There was no action going on there at the moment. Taken on John O'Hare, number nine. And Paul Gardner, you might explain the significance of that yellow card. Yes, uh, that is a warning to the player that if he does anything like that again or indeed commits any other sort of serious offense in the game, he'll be sent off the field, in which case uh, his team have to play one man short. They'd have to play with ten men for the rest of the game. So one yellow card means the play player is playing the rest of the game with a sort of sword hanging over his head. Wide pass by Dillon. The shot taken and it bounces off Cooper and he dives out to make the save. Little dangerous for Ken Cooper that time. That ball, slippery, I think, and he didn't I, have his balance. I, I, think think Cooper, ball. I think Cooper's a little surprised by the pace of this shot. It comes in like this. And I think it gets to him a little quicker than he thinks. Bounces away, but he's very quick to pounce on it. No danger after the initial bounce. Back to live action now. This is Keith Eddy, Mike Dillon, who made that fine pass just a moment ago. Dmitry Evich across the midfield stripe. Just outside the danger zone. Number three, Black Vito Dmitry Evich. Nice pass, Pelé. Kicked away by Glenn Myrnick, momentarily at least, out of trouble. And now, nope, Charlie Aitken, number 17 for New York. Steve Hunt, number 11. New York, I think, Paul, very much in command so far. 
Yes, they are. They're not achieving the sort of penetration into the Dallas penalty area that they'd want, though. They're not really converting this territorial superiority into shots on goal. Pele looks for Canalia. Nope, it's Topic, and Glenn Marnick has it. That's the difficulty, of course, in the area. That ball slid under somebody's foot. It's this very slippery, slick turf and a very slippery, slick ball. George Lay going back to control for Dallas. Alan Hinton. Hinton to O'Hare. O'Hare heads it off, but it's taken by Dmitrievich. Now Dallas gets it back as O'Hare has a collision. And Dallas will control as it's out on New York. Signs of quick breaking there by Dallas. They can be dangerous on these quick breaks, suddenly springing out of defense. A sudden change of direction in the game like that. You suddenly catch the opposing defense unawares. They're thinking offense, and suddenly uh, they've got to play defense. 15.45 to go. First half, no score. Dallas and the New York Cosmos on WFAA-TV in Dallas. 15.38 remaining. This is Keith Eddy going back. He'll send it over to Messing, and New York will control. And not one boo on that play. You'll notice <laughs> that's perfectly all right when it's done by the white shirts. They boo in the States, and they whistle in Europe. They do, yeah. Whistling in Europe is not complimentary. This is Canalia, number nine. Fine player from Lazio of Italy. Dmitrievich. You see, New York are moving the ball about with great authority in midfield, but New Dallas getting back very quickly, packing their defense, making it very difficult here where it matters. Canalia, I'm afraid, was pushed off the ball there. And he doesn't quite like that. The referee didn't see it, so we'll play on. Ken Cooper, longtime veteran goalkeeper for the Tornado last week with his 41st shutout in North American Soccer League. That is a league record. Tornado, Jimmy Ryan, number seven, being marked by Aiken. This is Ballinger, back to Ryan, number seven. Cohen's on the right wing, but Ballinger goes left. Kevin Culey to Ballinger, left foot in attempt. Goes wide to the left. And we've got a corner kick coming up for the Dallas Tornado as it went. I wasn't quite sure when I was watching that whether, in fact, Bellinger's shot was weak or whether it was a deflected. Obviously, it was deflected. Might explain, Paul, why we have a chance of why these corner kicks can be so dangerous. Well, because you're starting from a set position. So, in other words, uh, you've got a chance to set things up here. The ball comes in. You're going to get it where the goalkeeper hopefully can't get to it, but your players can. Well, you, I think you saw a very good example of the danger there. The ball skidded past everybody. Um, no. Beautiful backward pass by the Canalia to Dmitrievich. Dmitrievich kicks it out on the right side, and New York will control. What a fine pass. Beautiful back heel pass there, and that, believe me, is not easy to do on a dry field, on a wet field. Pele. Take my hat off to him. Wide to the right, goal kick Dallas. Well, we have to try and guess what Pele was trying to do there. I don't think that was a pass. I think he looked up and he saw Kenny Cooper off his line, and I think he tried to loop that ball over his head. Difficult thing to do. I don't think any other player on the field would have even tried it. Ends on view of Neil Cohen, wearing number two, across midfield. Looking for O'Hare, can't find him. George Lay heads it back. Topic just misses. And Dallas will control. That was another Bob, Bobby Smith's rather vigorous tackles there, <laughs> resulting in another free kick to Dallas. They had his foot very high. Danger zone penetrations, the Tornado 12 and the Cosmos 19. We define the danger zone, for those of you who are watching soccer for the first time, as a penetration inside the 35-yard line. It is at that point when the real fireworks can begin in soccer. So penetrations 12 to 19. This, for example, is a penetration by the Dallas Tornado, but it is controlled by Mike Dillon, number 20 of New York. And he will chip it back to Shep Messing. And again, we hear an absence of the right No, I, I heard a solitary boo there. Somebody <laughs> with a taste in the crowd is objecting to that on purely soccer principles, I think. Here's New York, Canalia, Pelé. Watch these two work. Pele. Steve Hunt. Canalia. Nope, it's Topic. Tries to find Canalia. Back to Pele. Nice tackle by Roy Turner, but it was uh, a little too exuberant. Uh, too exuberant. And Turner says, no, 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 no. Nothing wrong with that at all. The referee doesn't agree with him. Pele is down. Pele is still down. Here's Pele. Going in, and clearly he's taking Pelé's legs before he gets to the ball. That is a foul in soccer. If you get the ball first and then take the man, it would not be a foul. Pelé is still down on the ground, rolling about in agony there. Let's see, take another closer look at that. There's Pelé trying, trying to control the ball. In comes Turner. The left leg is going across. 
He does, I don't think he ever got to the ball at all. 12.02 remaining in the first half. No score yet. From the Meadowlands in New Jersey, this is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Great game, right? Ken Cooper again to remind you about the super soccer ball offer from Dr. Pepper. You can get an official Dr. Pepper soccer ball like this one for only $8.95 plus six Dr. Pepper bottle cap liners. Get your soccer ball by mailing $8.95 plus six bottle cap liners to Dr. Pepper Soccer, P.O. Box 29223, Dallas, Texas 75229. Get your soccer ball today from the most original soft drink ever, Dr. Pepper. Shot taken on the free kick by Canadia, the save by Ken Cooper, and here come the tornado once again. Neil Cohen, skies are beginning to brighten up just a little bit, Paul. Oh, I think we've got, uh, I don't know what they measure light in these days. I've forgotten my uh, light measuring days, but it's certainly three or four times as bright as it was 10 minutes ago. And just as I said that, the rain starts to fall again. Wouldn't you know it? 11.37 remaining first half. This is Glenn Myernick for Dallas, Steve Petcher, number four. Out on the right side, this could be taken away. No, it's not. Controlled by Dallas Ballinger. Roy Turner. Nice defensive job by the Cosmos, and this is Steve Hunt, number 11. Back to Dmitrievich, here's Pelé, watch it now. Pelé, a shot, curving shot, but right at Ken Cooper. Again, one of those shots, he's, he's seeing that Cooper is playing this game off his line. He's always about four or five yards out. Pelé is an absolute master at sending the ball up in the air and hooking it so that it drops suddenly, and that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get it over Cooper and down into the net. Ramon Mifflin, number 15. Whoops, George Lay with the steal, but there's a foul call. Nope, play on. We're seeing some of these sort of little tricks that, that this um, AstroTurf and Brain combined do. When the ball is in the air and it hits the ground, it skims off as though it's hit on a, a greased sort of surface. It really bounces off like mad, but when you're pushing it about on the ground, it seems to slow it up. Steve Petcher across midfield. See, that ball almost came to a halt before he got to the player it was intended for. Tony Ballinger, Ballinger inside the 35, Ballinger on the run. A shot wide and over the goal. Kevin Culey. Goal kick, New York. Good run there by Ballinger. Very good run indeed. His final shot, of course, he left it maybe just a second too long and it was blocked, but an excellent run. Good penetrating run by this young American player. Ten minutes, ten seconds remaining. Scoreless first half. Dallas and New York. From Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey. New York Cosmos, Dallas Tornado. Roy Turner. For Dallas, here's John O'Hare, number nine. O'Hare being chased by Aitken, heads to his left. Keith Eddy also marking him. This is Jimmy Ryan. Ryan back to O'Hare. Culey chips it back, and Aitken heads it. Oh, nice try. John O'Hare with a little John O'Hare try, trying to bring the ball back from behind him over his head. Here comes the ball, headed back across the middle by Aitken. And he looks like a ballet dancer there bringing it back, but of course he didn't unfortunately go near the goal. During all that little exchange of passes, I heard an absolutely monumental scream from the other side of the field, which was our friend Hinton yelling for the ball, all on his own on the left. I heard it here, but nobody on the field heard it, apparently. He didn't get the ball. Topich for New York, number 18. Here come the Cosmos on the attack. He's in the danger zone area now. Hinton with a takeaway, but a foul is called. Danger zone conversion, three of five for the Cosmos. That means that they have had five restarts. Uh-oh, watch it now. Hewley kicks it safely out of trouble, and Jim Ryan controls for Dallas. They have had five restarts inside the danger zone and converted three to shots on goal. That's the three out of five mark. This is Tony Ballinger for Dallas, number 17. Kevin Hewley, number 10. Cohen, number two. Jim Ryan, number seven. Very good ball Back from to Ryan. Ballinger. Ballinger again in good position. Left side, left-footed kick, and out of danger by Mike Dillon, number 20. Looking for Pelé, headed back for Dallas by Roy Turner. And the foul is called on Pelé, and that will bring a response from the crowd. Yeah, well, I must admit, I don't quite understand that one. It seemed to me that uh, Turner was just diving for the ball. I don't think uh, Pelé touched him. Pelé's not protesting. Well, he's applauding the referee's decision. That must be sarcasm. Pelé, number 10. Steve Petcher, number 4. Ramon Oops. Mifflin, this could be trouble. Jimmy Ryan, inside the penalty box area, but New York controls. Steve Hunt, number 11. Long left-footed kick. Steve Petcher will have this one for Dallas, number four. Here comes Mifflin, and Petcher slips on the artificial surface. 
across the touchline, New York throw in. Slips never fully regained his balance, put his kick into touch there. I would say that Dallas are coming more into the game towards the end of this first half here. New York are beginning to look a little bit sloppy and under pressure at the back in, in their defense. They can't afford to do this. Rain is continuing to fall. 7.27 remaining in the first half. Vern Lundquist and Paul Gardner from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Nice give and go. Mike Dillon, number 20. Left side to Steve Hunt, number 11. Cohen comes up to mark him. Watch out. This is Dillon, but he slips as he tries to let it fly. Out to Kevin Cooley of Dallas, number 10. Cooley still controls. Jim Ryan on the run. Ryan in a chase with Charlie Aiken. And Aiken sends it back to Chef Messing. Again, on that last New York attack, we saw an example of the packed Dallas defense. Everybody was back very quickly, and by the time Hunt got in his center, I counted eight players, uh, Dallas players, back into the penalty area. And it's very difficult to find a way through on that sort of forest of red shirts like that. Here comes New York. Glenn Marnick going over. Canalia, number nine for New York. Alan Hinton, number 11 for Dallas. Being marked by Canalia. Marnick. Crowd feeling. Oops, intercepted. Nice pass. Pelé, Turner heads it out. Hunt has it, number 11. Myronick saves Dallas that time, number 15. Here comes Cooley. And this will be taken by the Cosmos. 6-14 remaining from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. You'll soon get a diploma, but are you going to get a job? Well, stand with the Marines. See your recruiter or call this number toll-free. The $400 rebate on the 1976 Fiat 131 goes on. But it won't go on forever. Bicycle riding is fun, especially when it's for a cause like diabetes. Have fun and help millions of people by joining the Diabetes Bike-a-thon. I'm Roger Staubach. Thank you. 5.38 remaining. No score. And Steve Petcher just sends it out of bounds. New York will have the throw in right at midfield. Number 17, Charlie Aitken. Back to Keith Eddy. Eddy, right side. Mike Dillon. Topic. Pele. 1,261 goals in his career. Roy Turner makes the stop. Roy Turner is infuriated again. He's better, he's better be careful with his protesting. Yeah. Pelé claimed a handball, he put his hand up to stop it, and the referee, Mr. Hyatt, said, yes, it was a handball. Mr. Turner said, no, it wasn't. And there you can see the wall, Paul, that they formed now on their free yeah, this, kick. This is obviously designed to help the goalkeeper. If they can block off half that goal, the goalkeeper's task is that much easier. Mifflin's free kick. And New York still controls. Keith Eddy, back at midfield. Offside, and the tornado played. Uh, well, Charlie they played it needs a little bit of explaining there. When the ball comes through to a Cosmos player, he must have two Dallas opponents between him and the goal line. Now, if all the Dallas fullbacks and everybody rush up field, they leave as they did there. Aitken standing more or less on his own. That is an offside position. Game stops. Free kick to Dallas. Steve Petcher, number four, four nineteen remaining in the first half. No score. John O'Hare, but taken by New York. This is Steve Hunt, number eleven. Right side, Topich, number 18. Alan Hinton takes it away from him. Hinton comes to the right side to Jim Ryan. Whoops, put a little too much English on the kick. Too much English and too much damper, I'm afraid. This ball is very difficult to control. You, you can't really blame a player for missing a thing like that. It's, it's just slipping and sliding all over the place. 3.48 to go first half. Here's Hunt on the chase. Cooper comes out and makes the stop. Cooper very quick off his line, playing very far out of the goal there. Very necessary there, because I think Hunt would have got to that ball and he would have got off a shot. Goal kick for Ken Cooper, way downfield in New York. Bob Smith heads it back, but here's Alan Hinton for Dallas. Hinton trying to find Jim Ryan. And this is Ramon Mifflin for New York, number 15. Here come the Cosmos. Mifflin sends it up to Canalia. Little give and go with Pelé, but it's taken away by Roy Turner. They had a mix-up on it. They certainly had a mix-up there. That's one of the problems when you try and play short passes between two players. You, you might get that sort of thing occasionally. Cosmos throw in. Pelé is trying to take it. Petra won't let him. I think it's a free kick. I think it's a free kick here. Yeah, I think they're calling a foul on Pelé. Free kick to Dallas. Pelé put his leg across, played the man, not the ball. Bob Smith going back. 
And again, that ball hitting the turf and just taking off at 90 miles an hour. If it had been pushed along the ground, I don't think that ball would ever have got out there. Keith Eddy for New York, number five. North American Soccer League action. Live from the Meadowlands Complex in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Glenn Meyerling, number 15. Of course, Channel 8 will be carrying a total of seven North American Soccer League games throughout the summer. And we are pleased to be a part of the package this year for NASL soccer. There's Mifflin. We yeah. haven't seen too much of him in the first half. I have a feeling Mifflin does not like playing in the rain. I suppose he'll score a spectacular goal now <laughs> if I said that. Here's Canalia with a shot wide right. Fetcher didn't quite get there in time. No, Fetcher was slow to move across there. Canalia was in there, shot on the turn wide and I, I must say I admire the way Kenny Cooper is just standing there. He didn't even move for that ball. He knew it was going wide. Next Saturday, Tornado versus San Jose, 8 o'clock at Oakley Stadium. Hope you'll be there. John O'Hare, number nine for the Tornado. Jim Ryan, number seven. Ballinger, taken away by Keith Eddy, number five. This is Topic, wearing 18 for New York. Whoops. Dillon slips and falls, and Kevin Culey controls for Dallas. The rain has, has subsided right now, but uh, obviously the effect of the rain on the uh, artificial surface is still quite prevalent. Look at Ballinger. Just another example of it there. I think the pass was a little bit misplaced, and the player has no chance of turning and getting back to it. Here's Beautiful Canadia. Ball. Great pass. Canadia. Petra. Canadia. Good ball control. Great play by Catch quick Kenny Cooper. Kept the scoreless tie. And we're into the final minute of the first half. Let's look That's at another again, example. Paul. Beautiful ball here by Hunt. Canalia running well onto the ball. Pushes it maybe a little too far. Gets it back with a flick of the right foot. Good solid shot. And there's Cooper off his line again. Down like a flash. Tony Ballinger kicks it free. It'll be a corner kick, though, I believe, as it's across the end line. And that should be a corner kick. Indeed, it is for the New York Cosmos. Mifflin, Mifflin quickly trying to set it down because they're fighting the clock. This 33 seconds to go. Roy Turner kicks it safely out, but the Cosmos get it right back. Here's Steve Hunt, number 11. Into the center. Petcher way up in the air. Sky high, and the Cosmos control again. 18 seconds remaining before halftime, and the Tornado played New York offside again. The tornado came out very quickly. The New York forwards, Kinalia and Topic in that instance, were slow to come out, and they were left again with only Kenny Cooper behind them. And you must have another player there. They're both offside. Final two seconds. And there it is. It's halftime with our score, the Tornado nothing and New York nothing from Giant Stadium in Meadowlands, New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. When you bring your car to Amco Transmissions in the morning, we usually get it back to you the same evening. We know just how much you need your car. We do things right. Amco, double A, MCO. Stop by the Amcos in Garland, Irving, Fort Worth, Arlington, and in Dallas on Ross Avenue, West Mockingbird, and Oak Cliff. Take a good look at the better life. Here's our latest big screen portable with true to life color, touch tuning to switch channels instantly, a handy remote for silently selecting programs from across the room. The easy life at an easy price. I said that life. Then go. On WFAA radio, there's always someone interesting to talk to, like Superfan. Sports, that's what we talk about every day from 4 to 7. I believe the real story in sports happens outside the foul lines, in the locker rooms and front offices around the various leagues. And whether you're a turkey or a superstar, we tell it like it is. Superfan, someone to talk to on WFAA. You're in with Superfan on News Talk 57. That was some party dancing all night Ended up eating pizza by dawn's early light I can't help it if I like to live But living like that means something's got to give I got to get me out of seltzer Fast, fast, pop, pop, fizz Cause all I want to really think is fast, fast Upset stomach and aching head Meet the plop, plop, fizz, fizz All I want to really think is fast
Hi, once again, everybody. Bern Lundquist back at halftime with our score. Nothing, nothing. The Dallas Tornado and the New York Cosmos here at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. Our analyst today, Paul Gardner, as I said at the outset, one of the most renowned soccer writers in America. And Paul, perhaps some general observations to begin with the first half of play. The general observation on the first half of play are that the Cosmos had the better of the play up until I should think about 10 minutes from the end when Dallas, it seemed to me, started to come more into the game. Uh, on the other hand, the score is nothing, nothing. And this is all that matters as far as Dallas is concerned. They've gone out there and they've done the job they wanted to do. They've stopped New York scoring. New York are a high scoring team. They've got some marvelous players out there who can really hit the ball. They're a little off target today. Canali has had two or three shots, which perhaps on a better day would have at least uh, brought a save from Kenny Cooper. Today they're going wide. New York probably not too satisfied with what they're doing because they're controlling midfield, but they're not producing shots from it. They're not uh, converting that into goals. And of course, this is always very worrying to a coach because he sees all this midfield control. And he thinks, God, this is great, but we're not getting goals. And then you begin to get a little frustrated. And suddenly Dallas break, and they have broken suddenly from defense to offense two or three times very quickly, and they've looked dangerous. And I'm looking particularly towards the man who's lurking out on the left wing on the far side of the field. The next half, he'll be on the side of the field nearest us, Alan Hinton, who seems to be able to strike the ball very solidly and very hard. This is dangerous. He can score that man. Have you been surprised by any elements of the play so far? Uh, I'm not surprised. Very pleased, I think, by the performance of the American players on the Dallas team. Myonic at the back there. He's playing against Calais, who's the world's greatest player. He's playing against Kinalia, who certainly on the Dallas team. Mayanik at the back there. He's playing against Pelé, who's the world's greatest player. He's playing against Kinalia, who's certainly one of the best center forwards in the, in the world. He's playing against Topic, who's a first-class Yugoslavian player. Mayanik last season was playing in college soccer, and yet here he is, walking about out there, strolling about in a sense, not hurried, very cultured, very cool, very calm, doing the right thing nearly every time. Very impressive first half for me. Pecha. Um, perhaps not in the same class of coolness as Mayanik, but doing a solid job out there. And again, Bellinger, I think, in an attacking sense, has got himself into, oh, on three or four occasions, very good attacking positions. And uh, these three young American players, I'm very, very pleased with the way they play. You know, and, and of course, as a general overview, this is, uh, this is what is needed in the North American Soccer League play. Uh, soccer league the emergence of the american players oh absolutely yes this, this is the way the game is going eventually and of course we've got to have american players we've got to have young american players who can start young bellinger is interesting in this sense because he's been signed straight out of high school uh Mayanik came out of college petra came out of college too but there is a tendency amongst many people in soccer in this country now to say these young players have got to be signed early. It's no good them going to college. We've got to get them early, and they've got to play alongside professional players, such as you've got on these teams here. Can they do it? Well, Bellinger is doing it. On the list of reserves for the Cosmos, we have a young man, number 21, Gary Etherington. I don't know whether he'll get into the game or not. Same thing with him, signed straight out of high school. I don't know that, uh, that we... Uh I don't know what I was going to ask you is what I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe I'll tell you what you were going to okay, ask. Okay, why don't you? You were going to ask me uh, whether or not, in my opinion, the... afraid you were going to ask that. That's always a problem. What we can expect in the second half? Um, am I allowed to say more of the same? I don't think... Um, I don't think that there'll be any changes. Now, looking at the teams on the field, uh, we'll have to work out whether there are any substitutions. I wouldn't have expected it. We are back to play in the second half. Scoreless game. This is Keith Eddy, captain of the New York Cosmos. Eddy wearing number five. Across midfield, long pass. Oops, Penalia. And it goes across the end line. It'll be a goal kick, Dallas Tornado. Again, that ball running very, very quickly. Oh. Even though the rain seems to have eased off now, the field, of course, is not going to dry that quickly. So we're going to have to cope with this speedy ball zipping away from the players like that. Really unfortunate that the rain did come because they had better than 27,000 here last week for the Rochester game in the New York Cosmos. And they had thought of a crowd of about 35,000 this afternoon. Not quite there. Jim Ryan, number seven for Dallas. Ryan being marked by Charlie Aitken. And the linesman says it's New York throwing. Aitken wearing number 17. Pele back to Aitken. This is Demet Dmitrievich. Topic misses. George Lay controls for Dallas. Kevin Cooley, number 10. 
Mifflin, number 15 for New York. Steve Hunt and Neil Cohen, number two, and Roy Turner, number six for Dallas. Jim Ryan, nice pass out on the wing. But it's taken by Mike Dillon, number 20 of New York. Back to Aitken. Jim Ryan marks him. Just about makes the tackle. Can't quite get the ball, but uh, does get the Dallas throw-in ball. Certainly got to admire the stamina of the Dallas players because they're retreating very quickly onto defense. They break very quickly onto attack. And you saw, gathered around Aitken when he was trying to clear the ball, you saw three Dallas players around him. Tony Bellinger will be uh, with the throw-in for Dallas. Jim Ryan. And referee Jim Hyatt says foul. I suppose that's sort of backing in, we would call that, on Ryan, sort of backing into um, the New York defensive player there. Keith Eddy, number five for New York, has control, looks upfield. Now decides to pass, but it's intercepted by George Lay of Dallas, number three. Back to Neil Cohen. Cohen on the right side. Tony Ballinger has to wait for the ball because it's slowed down in the... Uh, would wet you, surface. Would you say the ball was sticking in the mud? I don't know what, what sort of mud you have in these games. Here's Ryan. Shot is over the goal. Goal kick, New York Cosmos. On that interception just now, a good example. Um, looked like a good in interception coming forward there by George Lay. Actually, I think it was more a case of the ball, again, not getting to its target. It, it's, it's simply stuck in the uh, artificial plastic mud that presumably we have underneath the artificial plastic grass. Artificial plastic mud. Is there no such thing? I uh, had not learned of it until just now. <laughs> Roy Turner in filet. Nice header by Turner. Tony Ballinger, number 17. Here comes the tornado on the attack. Inside the danger zone now, but it's taken away by New York. And here come the Cosmos. They're on the run. This is Mifflin, Ramon Mifflin, number 15. He's got Topic out on the right side. Nice pass inside the penalty box area. Left-footed kick by Kananya, and it's headed away, but still in the air, and finally kicked out of danger by Neil Cohen. I don't think George Lay would be too pleased to hear him say that he headed that away, but I think it hit him on the head, and he was a little unsure where he was for a second or two after that. Mifflin, number 15 for New York. Nice pass. Taken by Dallas. And Cuba sends it back to Ken Cuba. Glenn Myronick, number 15 for the tornado. Youngster from Hardwick College. Across midfield. Very good ball out of defense by Myronick. Right to the feet there. Gentleman here running into collected in a position where the man marking him behind him has no chance of getting to it at all. This is Hunt. And Pelay with Roy Turner, number six. It'll be a New York throw-in. Last touch by a Dallas player on the far touch line. No score in the game, 40 minutes and 43 seconds remaining. Inside the danger zone, Steve Hunt, Pelé. Coming to the right. And Cooper comes out to make the stop. I don't know, uh, Paul, was he trying to pass then, or was that a shot on him? No, I think that was meant to be a pass, and, and again, um, pushed too far ahead. And also, another, another matter of kicking, uh, too much on it. In other words, hit too hard. Not, in, in soccer terms, not weighted properly. Beautiful Here pass comes there. Aiken, fine pass. Aiken will center. Cooper out to make the stop. Tried to find Topic, but Cooper was there in front. Cooper was there, but the referee's blown his whistle. There was some pushing going on there between uh, Kinalia and Petra. Pushing by Kinalia, of course, so free kick to Dallas. Glenn Myronick, number 15 for the Tornado. Well, and the referee's going to make him take that again. I don't know why. 41 career shutouts, North American Soccer League record for Ken Cooper. He established that uh, 41st one last week against St. Louis. Steve Petra to Myronick. Malay comes over to mark him. You can see how the ball slows up on this surface. They really can't be that accurate with the passes, I would guess. Well, you see, that's the problem. A, a soccer player used to pushing the ball along the ground like that does it with a certain amount of weight from his foot, and he knows how much it's going to do. Here, he's going to have to hit it harder. This is Topich, number 18. Topich inside the penalty box. Ballinger tries to defend. Well, we have a lot of boost from the crowd because they think Petcher handled that ball, but in fact, what we're going to get is a free kick to Dallas because they, the New York Cosmos player was offside. In other words, he got beyond all the Dallas players except the goalkeeper, and uh, that's uh, a no-no in soccer. You're not allowed to do that. No score in the game, 38-55 remaining in the first half. From the Meadowlands in New Jersey, this is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Hi, I'm Ken Cooper. 
And while I stay on top of the game, I want to tell you about a great soccer ball offer from Dr. Pepper. You can get an official Dr. Pepper soccer ball like this one for only $8.95 plus six Dr. Pepper bottle cap liners. Get your soccer ball by mailing $8.95 plus six bottle cap liners to Dr. Pepper Soccer, P.O. Box 29223, Dallas, Texas 75229. Get your soccer ball today from the most original soft drink ever, Dr. Pepper. We're back with no score in the ball game. 38-12 remaining in the ball game. Roy Turner for Dallas, number six. Neil Cohen, number two. Here's Ballinger inside the danger zone. A nice uh, tackle by Dmitrievich, number three. And on the uh, right side, long pass, but Cooper will come out and make the stop. Then Myrnick back with him. Whoops, that certainly looked like a handball by Cohen there. I think it did, yeah. But you see, the referee really has the discretion whether to call that or not. In, in soccer, the fouls, the handballs, the trips have to be intentional. Now, look at this. Was this intentional or not? Uh, I think it probably was intentional. On second thoughts, I would have said no originally, but uh, I think it was. If it wasn't intentional, the referee uh, should not, by the rules of the game, call it. Well, that's the advantage of instant replay. We have the chance to second guess even ourselves. That's true. Yeah. But I'm not too happy about it when it proves I was wrong. Paul Gardner, our analyst this afternoon. This is George Lay. Heads it back out. Charlie Aitken. Nice pass by Aitken. And he's got the ball back. Charlie Aitken, number 17. Steve Hunt, number 11. Cosmos looking for the shot now. It's taken by Steve Hunt up and over the goal, and it'll be goal kick Dallas. You see the referee almost getting into the action on that play there. Uh, again, an interesting little factor in soccer. If the ball does hit the referee, and from time to time in a game it does, it is still in play. So if you make a nice pass to your teammate and the referee gets in the way and it bounces to an opponent, uh, tough luck. Uh, the ball stays with your opponent and it's still in play. This is Jim Ryan being marked very closely by Charlie Aiken. Certainly is close to him. Looks like they're strapped together. <laughs> <laughs> and the foul is called. Oh, no, no, the question is to whom? Well, it's to New York. Cosmos are in. And there's, uh, <laughs> there's our friend Dina. Is that who kept my seat warm here? That's it. He did a good job. I wish everybody could have seen Paul and Dina at lunch yesterday. Has better table manners than I do, I was told afterwards. <laughs> Ken Cooper, number one for the tornado. Cosmos get it right back. Ramon Mifflin and Glenn Myrnick, both wearing number 15. Mifflin in white. Cosmos in control. Good ball. Oh, great pass. This is Take a look at that, see how that developed. A beautiful ball there, a through pass to Bobby Smith. Steve Hunt, little thick, muscular little legs, churning away a superb pass through everybody. Look at that, like threading a needle. Bobby Smith takes it beautifully there, pushing it low. Not low, high. <laughs> I'll have to learn the language here. What a great pass by Steve Hunt. Paul. Absolutely superb. Went through everybody. That is the first goal the Tornado has given up in 1977, other than a penalty kick by Rod Marsh of Tampa Bay. A shot on goal by the Tornado just wide to the right. Well, that was an example of what I was talking about at half time. The Cosmos defense, they're having trouble with those, with those long balls coming in. Here comes Steve Hunt, churning his little way through there, pushed with the inside of the foot. See that left foot? One, two, three, four players that went past. Beautifully taken by Bobby Smith there. And I think you have to say that Cooper guessed that ball was going left and Bobby Smith hooked it over him going to Cooper's right. So the scoreless tie is broken and New York takes a 1-0 lead. On the first goal, the Tornado has given up other than that penalty kick by Rod Marsh in the game against Tampa Bay. 1-0. And here's Pelé. Pelé on the march. Pelé being marked by Ballinger tries to find Topic. And it's over the end line. Corner kick, I believe. Corner kick because the ball was played last by a Dallas defender. You see, there was a little bit of sort of pinball there, and finally it came off the Dallas defender, so New York had a corner kick. Ball placed in the angle of the corner. There's Hunt placing it, taking it quickly. Topic, number 18. Tried to find Belay, but it's kicked out of trouble. This is Charlie Aitken, number 17. See how on his own he is up there? The Dallas players only just getting out to him. They were all back defending in the penalty area. Keith Eddy, number five. Here's Bob Smith, who just scored the goal. Bob Smith with a header, and this will be a goal kick for the Tornado. 
33-45 remaining, one nothing. New York leads it from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. one nothing. New York leads with 33 minutes to go. Vern Lundquist and Paul Gardner, a New York goal kick now following an Aaron Dallas shot. Bob Smith, one of the American players in the North American Soccer League, Soccer League with the goal of the assist from Steve Hunt. Well, the, the, the irony, the paradox of that is, as I said earlier, that Bob Smith was signed to his first professional contract by El Miller when, uh, when El Miller was coaching the old Philadelphia Adams. And uh, it was El Miller who had confidence in Bob Smith and brought him along. What a fine athlete he is, etc., etc. Et Built up his confidence, turned him into a very good fullback. And now he comes along and does a despicable thing like this. <laughs> Scores against his old coach. This is Pelé, Meyernick and Pelé. Pelé with a little gypsy doodle. Ball is still free. Pelé with the pass. Mifflin. Back to Coppage. Pelé. Coppage. Kicked out by the tornado. It'll be a New York throw-in. Some wonderful stuff there. Very, very close little passing. Here we come, Pelé. Lennox is sort of running backwards there. Pelé stays on his feet, balances, gets the ball around, pushes it outside Bellinger. Here's Mifflin again. On the ground again there, Topich. Look at that close little stuff there. So finally it's whacked away there. Very dangerous stuff. Very difficult to defend against that. Steve Petcher was the fellow who kicked it out of trouble. And now we have an offside rule against New York, and the Tornado will get it back. With 31-47 remaining in the ball game, New York on top, 1-0. Tornado undefeated coming into the ball game. They had defeated in consecutive weeks St. Louis and Tampa Bay. We've got a slight, slight gap hiatus here because uh, Mayanek, you can see him in the background there, he's bending down and putting his shoe back on. That, I, 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 I hesitate to say Pelé faked him out of his shoes on that previous play, but... Um that, that is evidently what happened. He lost his shoe. Well, he's got it back on again now, so away we go. George Lay, number three. Tornado at home next to Saturday night at Ombia against San Jose. Topich is lurking near George Lay. Myronick has it right now. Headed away by Kevin Kuehling. Tony Ballinger. Noticeable, Vern, since the, um, since the New York goal, I think Dallas have been doing more attacking in the last five minutes, uh, almost, than they, than they did in the rest of the half so far. It's, it's inspired them. This is Mike Dillon for New York inside the danger zone. Coppage, number 18. Crossing pass. Hunt with the goal shot, but it's over the goal, and it'll be goal kick Dallas. Looked like a dangerous attack by New York, but when Hunt did finally get the ball, he was in a position almost on the goal line. Very difficult to do anything from that. Danger zone penetration is the Cosmos 41, the Tornado 24. And keep in mind that what we are statistically analyzing for you there are the number of times each team is inside their opponent's 35-yard line or the offside line. So the Cosmos lead it 41 to 24. Goal kick by Ken Cooper. John O'Hare slips and can't control, and Charlie Aitken takes it for New York. Aiken up to Steve Hunt. Oh, Neil Cohen kicks it away. It'll be a throw-in. 30 minutes and 29 seconds remaining from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Our score one nothing. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. Pitch for New York. Has control. Comes across midfield. He's got Bob Smith lurking out of the wing, but Smith pulls up, and here's the pass to Canaglia, and Cooper with the stop. Ever dangerous Giorgio Canaglia. Just about had the second goal of the game. His shot... I think was placed well. He wanted to get it wide of uh, Cooper, which he did, but of course he didn't have enough on it. The speed wasn't there. Cooper is down there to smother the ball. But of course you have to bear in mind, again, we keep getting back to this slippery ball. Almost any sort of shot that the goalkeeper has to play is dangerous because of the possibility of it slipping out of his grasp. George Lay to Alan Hinton. Hinton. Nice ball. Shep Messing has control. And there we have, we have an example of a, of a ball. Uh, Shep Messing is usually a very aggressive goalkeeper trying to punch the ball and sort of mispunching it. And the ball went straight up in the air. Here's his punch. Only one hand, and while well, he was barged there, you see, but the ball went straight up in the air. Normally, uh, Shep Messing would punch that ball out of the 35-yard line. He loves doing it. He likes punching things. Back to live action. Pelé to Aitken over on the left wing. Aitken has it back. Knocked away by Jim Ryan. Throw in New York. Quickly taken. Keith Eddy. Cosmos captain. Eddie looks for Bob Smith on the far side. Smith up in the air. This is Topic with a shot wide on the left side. And as he took that shot, the linesman on this side of the field, his red flag went into the air. Kinalia again had run forward too far, too quickly, and was offside. This is Alan Hinton, tornado captain from Wednesday, England. 
his hometown. No, is that what it says on the list? Uh, it should be. Well, I ha it is, yes. <laughs> okay. I have to, to know this because I live near there. It's Wensbury. It's, oh, uh, Wensbury. Wensbury. Oh, of course. Yes. You know it well. Yes. <laughs> it's not Wednesday. Uh, that's, a, that's a day of the week, even in England. Well, you see, it's nice to have you here. You not only provide analytical insight, but correct errors. That's right. I provide correct errors? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Paul Gardner working with us today. We've got 2749. I do specialize in that. There's Dina. I don't think she'll play this afternoon. No, I think I think her opportunity is gone. I believe she's not very good in, in wet weather, I, I've been told. But, uh, <laughs> her ball control suffers on, on this wet sort of turf. Mike Stower, trainer with her. Free kick for the Tornado. 27-28 remaining in the game. 1-0 on Bob Smith's goal here in the second half. Neil Cohen will take the free kick. You have to wonder how determined Dallas are. They only have four players up on this kick. Surprising. George Lay coming in from the left side. Lay trying to get free. Takes the shot, but it's knocked out by Mike Dillon. Now, do we have... Uh, a throw in or a corner kick. We have a big discussion here. We have Smith pointing in one direction, Mifflin pointing in the other there. Smith with his back to us. Turn around, Bobby. A lot of. Well, it is a throw in after all. Throw that. in. And quickly kicked out, and here come the Cosmos. This is Topic. Being marked by George Lay. Topic at the 35. Looks right where he's got Bob Smith. Goes to the center for Pelay. Nice pass by Pelay to Canalia. Steve Petcher trying to control Canalia. Kick back to Bob Smith. Here comes Ballinger to mark him. Pelé just is right by. Pelé, double team now. Struggle for it. Foul call. Pelé with his legs hooked out from underneath him by, uh, by Turner again. This, of course, is a dangerous situation for Dallas because the ball is probably about 25 yards out. Pelé or Mifflin will take it. You have two examples of different types of kick here. Referee telling those players, get back 10 yards. If Pelé takes it, almost certainly he'll hit it hard. If, well, we're seeing the, the wall trying to get in order. If Mifflin takes it, he'll probably hook it. Pelé runs over it. Can I just take the shot? It's it's wide. Wide. Not more than a foot wide of that. I'm telling you about Pelé and Mifflin, and Canalia takes it. <laughs> and that, in a way, is a good example of what El Miller's suffering through, because uh, New York have uh, Canalia's right foot shot, skimming past legs, that looked as though it hit somebody, but apparently the referee said it didn't. It was a goal kick to Dallas, and away we go. I say that's one of uh, the problems El Miller, the Dallas coach, is having to face up to. On those free kicks, New York have several people who can hurt you. I was talking about playing Mifflin, and lo and behold, it's Canalia who takes it and nearly scores. This is Roy Turner. Alan Hinton passes forward to John O'Hare, back to Alan Hinton, number 11. And Kevin Cooley was offside. Well, we have New York playing Dallas back in their own coin there. We're going to take a look at, at this free kick, kick. Again, Paul. Pushed aside, Kinalia whacking it with his right foot. And the ball, actually the ball was on target, it curved away, you'll notice. Neil Cohen tries to control, goes out of bounds, Alpha New York player, it's a Dallas throw-in. Steve Petcher, number four for Dallas, Raymond Mifflin. Referee says play on. This is Topic. back to Pelé. Well, Heads it quickly into Roy Turner, play on again, here comes Topic. And Myron, it comes over, and Ken Cooper comes out and makes the stop. Talking earlier on about if the ball hits the referee, of course, it did just that. It did hit the referee there. The referee is quite a substantial figure in this game, uh, in this particular game, in both senses of the word. He is in control of the whole game, and Mr. Hyatt, who's our referee today, is a very tall, very big man. George Lay, back to Roy Turner. We've got 24 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. The Tornado Trail, 1-0. Bob Smith's goal off a tremendous pass from Steve Hunt here in the second half. The only score thus far, Neil Cohen. John O'Hare, number nine. Mike Dillon marking him. This is Charlie Aitken, number 17, controlling for the Cosmos. But he's out of, across the touchline. It'll be a Dallas throw. 23-59 remaining. John O'Hare, number nine. 17 is Charlie Aitken for the Cosmos. And number seven, Jim Ryan for the Dallas Tornado. Looks for John O'Hare. Now looking for Ballinger and instead settles out for Glenn Myernick at the 35-yard marker. Myernick chips it errantly over the head of Jim Ryan. 23-38 remaining for the Meadowlands of New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Sox. Here's the sports video collection that you've been waiting for. All-American sports class. Back to live action now with 22 minutes and 59 seconds remaining. Cosmos in control. This is Pelé being marked by Roy Turner. Pelé. 
tornado. Jim Ryan just about gets it back with the Cosmos control as Ramon Mifflin goes out and sends it over to Aitken. Referee Joe Hyatt says play on, and here comes Pele. Inside the 35, and a shot wide to the right side. I think that again was blocked by a Dallas defender. I think we're going to get a New York corner kick on this. In other words, it went over the goal line, last played by a defender. Kenny Cooper getting ready to see what's going to happen on this corner kick. He's got some suggestions for his defense there, obviously. There you get a wide shot and an idea now. They come over to take the corner kick. It'll be taken by Steve Hunt, number 11. Steve Hunt will take it. Headed out. Mifflin trying to control. Taken back by the Cosmos. Mifflin again, number 15 in that pileup. This is Canalia. Canalia being marked by Neil Cohen. Canalia. Nice tackle by Cohen. He takes the ball away, and Jim Ryan controls for Dallas wearing number seven. Allen Hinton is open here on the left side, but Ryan doesn't see him. Now he does, and the pass is behind Hinton and controlled by Steve Hunt of the New York Cosmos. Steve Hunt is... Uh Another of my favorite words is quite ubiquitous on this team. We have him playing up front, we have him playing in field, and now we have him coming back to help out on defense. Absolute dynamo of energy here. Topic number 18. Kevin Culey comes back and then lets him go. This is Ramon Mifflin, number 15, at the 35, inside the danger zone. Kicked away by Kevin Culey, number 10 of Dallas. Pelé, one-on-one -on -one with Roy Turner. Quite a scramble, and Glenn Myernick comes out of it with a ball for the Dallas Tornado. Allen Hinton, number 11. Hinton dribbling up toward midfield. Dmitrievich marks him, now goes over to confront Ballinger. Right side, Neil Cohen, inside the 35. Nice move by Cohen. Cohen to John O'Hare. O'Hare taken away by New York. The Cosmos get it back with 20 minutes and 56 seconds remaining. And Chef Messing will have the ball for New York. Paul? And again, the, the player who pushed the ball back to Messing was Steve Hunt, who this time turns out way over on the far side of the field. Simply been everywhere in this game. Number 12 was Bob Smith. This is Topic wearing number 18 for New York. Well, Steve Hunt. Again. Yep, he is all over or ubiquitous, as you said. Is that what I said? Yes, you did. I rather like the word. Neil Cohen misses the ball, but Myronick gets it back for the tornado. 20 minutes and 30 seconds to go. One nothing New York leads. I can tell you that not only is he ubiquitous, He's but he's everywhere player. at the same time. 20-20, 20, 20, the time remaining, one nothing. One of the things that is puzzling me a little about this game is the fact that we have this very good forward at Derby, Alan Hinton, who's the captain, number 11, and he's not getting into the game enough. He's, he's out here on the left wing, and the ball is simply not coming to him, and one wonders why, in fact, he wouldn't be instructed to move in. Substitution? Substitution for the Dallas Tornado, and into the game comes, I think, Kyle Rowe Jr., number 12. Interesting move, this, because the man who's gone off is Roy Turner, the man who's been marking Pelé, which may signify that the Tornado, at this point, are fed up with defending. They one goal down. There's no point in it. There he is, uh, Kyle Rowe, an attacking player. This must mean, I can only interpret this as meaning, that Dallas are now going to attack more and more, that they've given up on defense. Paul, they're going to a 4-2-4, which they used so successfully last week, and you might explain exactly what that uh, concept is. I'll, I'll try, yes. 4-2-4, <laughs> four, four, four numbers. Four defenders, two midfielders, four attackers. What they've been using up to now was a 4-3-3, three, three, four defenders, three midfielders, and only three attackers. So they're putting one extra man into the attack, shortening midfield by one man. And I would expect to see them coming forward as much as they can now, and unquestionably playing the ball to Kyle Rowe as much as they can get it to him. Here's Pelé. Now, I should mention... Great that pass by Pelé to Canaglia. Cooper comes out, and Ryan kicks it toward the corner as it goes across the goal line, and he saves it, but uh, still trouble now. Cooper gets back. Dmitrievich, header, over the goal. Popic over the goal. Plenty of action on that. Play breaking suddenly. Marvelous pass to Canalia. Mayanek not controlling the ball there, giving it back. A center coming in. Now there is Topic up. Plenty of time, and he heads over the bar. I think he would imagine that he could do better than that. On a shot like that, straight in front of the goal with time to get up and really thump it for it into the ball. 18.54 remaining. Tornado. John O'Hare controls. It's across the touch line. It'll be a Dallas throw in. Tornado at home against San Jose next Saturday night, 8 o'clock at Omni Stadium. Our score, one nothing. The Cosmos lead on Bob Smith's second-half goal. In the rain in New Jersey. This is Keith Eddy, captain for the Cosmos. He may try and play that off the other player's legs to get a... He tried it, but it didn't succeed. Finally, 
I guess that was Aitken who cleared it over the touchline, throw in to Dallas. And it will be a Dallas throw in with 18-15 remaining. Let's see who's going to take it now for Dallas. This is Tony Ballinger, number 17. Trying to dry the ball so it doesn't slip out of his hands. Two hands on the throw, over the head. That's the throw. John O'Hare with Ramon Mifflin. Back to uh, the Cosmos. And here comes Alan Hinton to control for Dallas. Sends it forward, but nobody's there except Shep Messing, New York goalkeeper. And you notice Shep Messing then did not whack the ball yards downfield, which is a favorite ploy for goalkeepers, one that I'm never too keen on. Played away by Topic, Steve Petcher for Dallas, number four. Kevin Culey, number 10. Nice move by Culey. Keeps it away from Topic. Passes for Kyle Rote, Jr. But taken away by New York. Topic to Palais, but kicked out by Tony Bellinger. I wonder if that means that Bellinger is replacing uh, Turner as the man who's marking uh, Pelé. Bellinger seems to be sticking very close to him. We're losing Bellinger as an attacking player. How would you like to be a 19-year-old marking Pelé? I wouldn't like to be my present modest, uh, well, never mind how old I am, <laughs> marking Pelé either. <laughs> Here's Pelé and Ballinger. Pelé cuts inside. Ballinger with a nice takeaway. Tony Ballinger. Jim Ryan lets it go and it's taken by Dmitrievich. Vito Dmitrievich. New York has it. Pass over to Topic. But Marinic gets there in time and saves it for down. Another example of the ball not rolling as quickly as he'd want it to. Um, I think with the amount of weight, uh, the amount of power that Mifflin put into that pass on a dry ground, that would have reached Topic. Here's where it did it. Mifflin. Good pass to Canalia. Canalia just misses. My word, Canalia is so quick on that. I just don't know how he gets his foot out so quickly there. I thought that ball had run away from him. 16-18 remaining in the game. And let's look at Mifflin's pass. Now watch this second touch of the ball here. That foot, that right foot is, is up so quickly to get that second touch there. 16.07 remaining now from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. We are back in the Tornadoes. George Lay has it, but it's taken away by the Cosmos. And here's Topic. Two on two as Topic controls at the 35. Two Dallas defenders back. This is Glenn Meyer. Nick Topic working on him. Passes off to Steve Hunt. It's kicked away, but Topic has it back. Topic looking for the opening. Tries to give and go with Canalia. Here's Pelé. Pelé quickly over to Steve Hunt. Hunt knocks and fires. Save! Great save by Kenny Cooper. Beautiful save, a fine finish to a fine move by New York. Lovely soccer, all of it. Look at this close stuff here. Kinalia pushing it across to Pelé. Pelé pushing it through the middle there. Again, out to Hunt from Topic. Good right foot shot. Pushed behind. You'll notice that Cooper there, spectacular dive, did not push the ball back into play where it could be more dangerous. He pushed it behind. Corner kick. This is Steve Hunt. Bob Smith winds up and sends it right at Ken Cooper. Bob Smith is evidently after goals this afternoon. <laughs> We've got 14-31 remaining. Dallas trailing New York, 1-0. Crowd, I think they announced it just over 13,000, which is about 20,000 below what they had expected this afternoon. And the weather really did a number on them. Over the touch line, or the end line, rather, it'll be a goal kick for New York. Paul? Shep Messing, New York goalkeeper. The interesting story about him was he used to play for the Cosmos, and then the present coach of the Cosmos, Gordon Bradley, got rid of him because he didn't like his lifestyle. He thought he was a bit flaky and all the rest of it. He went to Boston, and then last, in the middle of last season, New York were in trouble. They needed a goalkeeper, and who did they get back? Shep Messing from Boston. Reformed, uh, absolutely spotless reputation now, and he's turned himself into a very good goalkeeper, and he's got the starting spot over a Turkish experienced Turkish goalkeeper that the Cosmos signed. So Messing, an American player, doing very well. 13.43 remaining. Dmitrievich, number three for New York. one nothing. Cosmos lead the Dallas Tornado. It's across the touchline on the far side. And will be a New York throw. Rain is, it's not raining right now, but the mist is still there. This is Pelé and Ballinger. Ballinger with a nice move. George Lay for Dallas. Here come the Tornado. Hinton calling for the ball, but Lay doesn't send it to him. Sends it back instead for Ballinger, number 17. Tony misses on the right side. It's almost as though the Dallas have got something against their captain here. Next Saturday, Dallas Tornado back home after two weeks on the road against San Jose. 8 o'clock at Ombi Stadium. It'll be Burger King trading card night. 8 o'clock Saturday night. Cosmos, Mike Dillon, number 20. But here's Jim Ryan, and this is John O'Hare. 
and it's saved by the Cosmos as Chef Messing makes the uh, stop from the feed from Mike Dillon. And just as I say it's misting and not raining, look what happens. I think you better not make any more comments on the weather at all, Vern. You seem That's to have a disastrous effect on it. Stay in sports instead of weather casting. <laughs> 12-29 remaining in the ball game. Glenn Myernick for Dallas. Tornado really not with that many scoring opportunities here in the second half. And they've gone to the 4-2-4 in hopes of creating them. They've gone to the 4-2-4, but of course, uh, one of the problems with the 4-2-4 is while you're pressing on the attack, you leave more space for your opponents to operate in. So you, you're taking a risk. Pelé and Ballinger. Look at Tony once again. Takes it away from Pelé. Really well done. Pelé wasn't too happy about that. Jim Ryan, number seven, at the danger zone, the 35. This is Kevin Culey, number 10, midfielder for the Tornado, over to Steve Fetcher. Finally, we get it out to, ugh, just out to Hinton. Hinton into the center. O'Hare, turn around, kicked away. This is Steve Petcher still controlling for Dallas. Out on the right side to Jim Ryan, who chases the ball and will keep it in play. 11.35 remaining in the game. Neil Cohen will not fire from that far out. Glenn Myernick at the 35-yard line now. Myernick chips it across. Headed back out and controlled by Cohen. Takes it away from Pelé. Neal on the offensive thrust now. And it's across the touchline. It'll be a Dallas throw. Steve Hunt who does the tackling there. Very noticeable on, these, on this attacking move. And the Dallas have been inside the New York 35-yard zone now. Well, there's a certain foul on Pelé. Dumped from behind. Um, no question but what the Dallas fullbacks are moving up on the attack. Both Petcher and Miami were extensively involved in those attacking moves and I noticed that only George Lay was back marking Canalia. What do you want to bet that Tony Ballinger just said sorry sir to Pelé? <laughs> if he can say it in Portuguese. 10.49 remaining from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Sock. Great game, right? Ken Cooper again to remind you about the super soccer ball offer from Dr. Pepper. You can get an official Dr. Pepper soccer ball like this one for only $8.95 plus six Dr. Pepper bottle cap liners. Get your soccer ball by mailing $8.95 plus six bottle cap liners to Dr. Pepper Soccer, P.O. Box 29223, Dallas, Texas 75229. Get your soccer ball today from the most original soft drink ever, Dr. Pepper. 10 minutes and 12 seconds remaining as the rain continues to fall. John O'Hare being marked by Charlie Aitken. And Aitken kicks it across the touchline. Dallas throw in inside the danger zone, about 30 yards out. 9.59. And that clock all important now. We're just sort Alan of seeing what, what often happens after a goal. New York, one goal up, have definitely slackened off a bit. Dallas, one goal down, are definitely pressing at the moment. Well, we hope you like that uh, last commercial. An unusual concept by Dr. Pepper to allow you to continue to see the soccer action while you hear a few words from them. We think it's an innovation and are glad that they have decided to try that concept. Here the tornado, Culey, Alan Hinton trying to control. Hinton does. Being marked by Bob Smith. Smith kicks it away. It'll be a throw in for Dallas. Hinton quickly up with the ball. Kevin Culey. Culey back to Hinton. Hinton. This is George Lay, still inside the 35, now outside the Myrnick. Nice attempt at a pass by Kevin Culey, but it's controlled by Bob Smith, and he'll go back to Chef Messing. Well, Chef Messing is waving his arms upfield. That looks as though he's going to punt the ball long. Danger zone penetrations, 49 for the Cosmos and 30 for the Tornado. And again, a quick explanation of what we are telling you there. That is the number of times each team has penetrated the opponent's 35-yard line. The so-called danger zone. Here the Cosmos with their 50th penetration right now. Left side, Steve Hunt being marked by Neil Cohen. Hunt, and it's off Cohen's leg, and that will be a corner kick for the New York Cosmos. Very clear example there of exactly what a corner kick is. Uh, Steve Hunt tried to send the ball. Cohen stuck his right foot out. The ball bounced off his right foot, went over the goal line. Last played by a Dallas player, corner kick to New York. Everybody gathering in the goal mouth there. You can see them. They're, they're, they usually pair off. Uh, one, one Dallas player against one New York player, and uh, they'll stand back a bit, and as the ball comes over, here it comes, they'll run in. Ramon Mifflin takes it, curves it in. Petcher heads it out for Dallas. This is Topic with a shot wide to the right, and we'll have a goal kick, Dallas. Eight minutes exactly remaining in the game from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. This is Dallas Tornado Soccer. 
We are back for the final seven and a half minutes of the game in the rain in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Mike Dillon, shot, goal, Dillon! And look at Bob Smith in total frustration, picks the ball away. Jeff Messing, hands on hips. Kevin Culey has tied the game with 7.05 remaining. I think we, we're, we're going to see a mistake here. We're going to see the ball slip under Aiken's foot here. And this is what I was talking about. Not under his foot, over his head. And then past Dillon there. In fact, two mistakes, one after the other. Culey on it, pounces on it and slams it into the net. Ball slipping through very quickly. And, there and is there's Dina celebrating for the <laughs> 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 Well, Dina knew what was going on. Kevin Culey with the goal that ties it up with 6.32 remaining. Here come the Cosmos back now as Culey has tied it up. Nice pass by Pelé. Dmitrievich with a shot wide to the left. It's a corner kick, I believe. Let's look at the goal again that tied the game. This is Cohen. Now his sender goes over Aitken, just over his head. I don't think it's touched there. Dylan turns and misses. Cooley's on it in the flash. No chance for missing. Good goal. Very good shooting and certainly good opportunism by Kevin Cooley. Six minutes remaining in the game, which has suddenly been tied. And keep in mind that there are no ties in the North American Soccer League. If it's tied at the end of regulation time, we go to 15-minute overtime. And if it is still tied at that time, we go to the North American Soccer League shootout. And we will explain that if we need to when we get there, Paul Gardner. I think, I think New York have only themselves to blame for being in this position because as I, I was beginning to remark, after their goal, they slackened off. They have allowed Dallas to get back into this game. They, one goal up, they, they could have been two goals up. They, they just did not press forward after the goal they got. Here come the Cosmos now across the danger zone. Cosmos on the attack, but Ken Cooper goes over to save. And I think that goal was such a great example of how quickly fortunes can change and things can happen in this game. Oh, absolutely, because, I mean, it's only one goal. One, a one nothing lead is just not enough, obviously. You, you want to be two or three goals ahead to, to start sitting back and preserving that lead. New York were doing it on a one-goal lead, and suddenly we're back into a tied game. Dallas only have to snatch another goal, and uh, New York find it very difficult to get back into the game. A uh, slight case of sandwiching there, I think, Dimitri Ovid, <laughs> well and truly thumped between, uh, who is that, Ryan and Carl Road. Five minutes and two seconds remaining. Cosmos have the ball. Here's Pelé. Being marked by Ballinger. Ballinger comes up. Referee Jim Hyatt does not call the foul, and Pelé's looking at him. I think he wanted one. I think he should have had one. I do, too. Here's Dmitrievich. Back to Steve Hunt. A lot of what in hockey would be forechecking here, forcing Neil to play the ball backwards. Alan Hinton kicks it back across the offside line. This is Steve Hunt off of Neil Cohen's head. Dmitrievich. Dmitrievich has it back. Number three. Over to Topic. Topic doing a nice job. Pass in the center. Shot! Mifflin from about 15 yards out. Dead on but missed the shot. Let's look I at think, it again. I think it was about 12 yards, actually. This is Topic. Jinky pushes a lovely ball through the middle. Of course, the ball is bouncing, and he got underneath it. That was sort of straight. Actually, it wasn't a good shot anyway. Now I come to look at it because it was straight to the goalkeeper. Maybe it should have been pushed wide of the goalkeeper. There's Cooper there trying to pretend that there was something wrong with that shot, but it is in fact a goal kick. Taken by Myrnick out to midfield. 3:51 remaining. Cosmos control. 1-1 one, one game with three minutes and 45 seconds to go. New York still has it. Bob Smith, who has the New York goal, back to Smith, right side. George Lay kicks it across the touchline. No messing about from George Lay there. No finesse, just whacking it into touch. Probably the right thing to do there. Bob Smith will throw it in. Does so to Pelé. Ballinger slips, and Pelé misses it. Dallas will get it back. Dallas goal kick. Ladies and gentlemen, Dallas goal. Scored by Kevin Hewley. Here's Myrnick. Up in the air, controlled by New York. Over to Bob Smith. Dmitrievich. Vito Dmitrievich from Yugoslavia. This is Charlie Aitken, number 17, at the offside line, 35 yards out. This is Dmitrievich again, just misses, but Pelé has it. He's right at the penalty box area, taken away by George Lay. Alan Hinton controls for Dallas. Steal by Bob Smith. Topic out on the right side. Topic center. Neil Cohen lets it go by him, and it's uh, 
across the touchline on the far side, and Dallas will control. A little what? hard stopping right there. Yep, wise move by Cohen to let that ball to let that ball run. He certainly knew that there was nobody behind him, and he wisely let it go. To play it in the penalty area like that merely means playing it back into trouble. 2.22 remaining in the ball game. 1-1 one, one tie. Kevin Cooley tied it up with just about eight minutes to go. Cosmos have it now. This is Dylan to Pelay. Taken away by Dallas. Jim Ryan. Ryan, right foot. Over to Alan Hinton. Hinton with the left-footed pass. Kyle Roach sends it back, but it's stolen by Mike Dillon. Roach tries to make the tackle in camp. Mifflin, Ramon Mifflin. Here come the Cosmos at the 35. He's got Dimitrievich on the left. In toward the center. Here's Pelé. Pelé. Little chip pass headed out by Petcher, then Ryan. Cosmos get it right back. Here come the Cosmos. Nice tackle made by the Tornado, and Dallas is on the attack. 149 remaining in the game. We've got a four-on-four -four situation. Pass out on the left side, taken away by Topic of New York. Topic forward, running back to help out on the defense. They needed him there. That was that was a four-on-four -four situation. Quick break by Dallas. And here's the reverse, a quick break by New York. Topic being guarded by Kyle Rowe. Topic with a center. Can't find his man. Tony Ballinger will control for Dallas. We're in under 90 seconds remaining in the game. A 1-1 ball game. The Tornado and the Cosmos. We trust you have enjoyed it. Don't forget it will not end in a tie. If it is tied at the end of regulation, we have a 15-minute overtime period. This is Jim Ryan for Dallas. And those uh, 15 minutes we should mention, Vern, that's sudden death. So the first goal, the game is over. Here's a possibility in the ball. Well, I think, I think it was offside anyway. Yeah. Oh, there's a splendid little ball boy there. Well equipped. For... We are back for sudden death. Seven and a half minutes. And what that means, in effect, is that at the end of seven and a half, if there is no score, the teams will switch ends of the field. It goes 15 minutes for sudden death. And here comes the tornado. Canadia! Cooper comes out and makes the stop and just about slip right by the ball. Well, there was a handball in the middle of that, uh, and it was Canalia trying to pull a fast one on the referee. Here's the pass. There's the bounce, and you're going to see a nice hand well, a knee ball, in fact, there to control the ball. The referee has given a free kick. The Dallas ball back in play. Dallas on the attack. Jim Ryan for Dallas, number seven. Foul is called against the Cosmos. Sustained booze from the crowd there. They don't agree with you, man. Chef Messing comes out and makes the stop. Messing quickly out in the Cosmos control. We've got 639 remaining in the first half of the overtime period. Here come the Cosmos, Ramon Mifflin. Mifflin with a fine Beautiful pass. Beautiful ball from Mifflin. Topic comes back and finds no one there except Neil Cohen. And Cohen kicks it out of trouble, at least momentarily. But the Cosmos, Steve Hunt has it back. He comes across the 35, tries to find Canalia. Canalia has it. Canalia shoots. Oh! Ken Cooper is irate with his defense, and I, well, he may be calling for an offside there. This again. Sure no, no, Ken Cooper, this is Hunt's pass. Ken Cooper is annoyed because the defense let Canalia get in behind them. Canalia whacks it. Cooper defends himself, doesn't get the ball. Ball back off the crossbar there. Cooper very annoyed with his defense for letting Canalia get through like that. Kenny rarely gets upset, but he was visibly disturbed that time. Well, I think he, he nearly got killed by Canalia's <laughs> shot. I think I'd be annoyed with that. This is Charlie Aitken. Rain falling again in New York. Overtime with 5.39 remaining in the first half of overtime. Ramon Mifflin for the Cosmos. Wearing number 15, marked by Kevin Keeley. Passes it forward. Good pass. This is Steve Hunt. Hunt to Canalia. Canalia misses his shot. Cooper comes over and makes the save. Again, Petcher doing a good, go good job on Canalia, keeping goal side of him, making sure that Canalia does not get a free shot on the goal. Hefty booze. There's free kick for Dallas here. And the crowd, as you can probably hear, are not in agreement with the referee once again. Kenny Cooper, long punt. Taken again by Bob Smith of New York, but the tornado gets it back. Glenn Myronick, rookie from Hartwick College. Number one draft choice in the entire North American Soccer League. Danger zone penetration so far. 55 for the Cosmos, 35 for the tornado. Again, a reminder that what we're talking about there by the number of times each team has penetrated the opponent's 35-yard line. That is a designated danger zone. The Tornado bench, that's Bobby Moffitt in the middle and Al Miller on the left-hand side of your screen. Here come the Cosmos on the attack again. 4.30 remaining in the first half of overtime. George Lay heads it out.
Steve Hunt has it for the Cosmos. Lay again takes it away. A lot of legs up in the air there, and the referee has decided that Steve Hunt's leg was highest. That comes under the heading of dangerous play. You mustn't high kick like that. There go the legs up in the air. Well, it looks like six of one, half a dozen of the other to me, but the referee says it's against New York. Marnick with a long kick, nice controlled by too. John O'Hare. Here's Alan Hinton. He's got Keeley on the left side. Nope, crossing pass. O'Hare. Kyle Rowe Jr. tries to get it and can't. And it's kicked out by Bob Smith of New York. Hinton waving his arms in the air there, appealing for a handball against Smith as he, as he attempted to play that ball. That, of course, would be disastrous for New York as that would have been a one-on-one -on -one penalty kick on an almost certain goal for Dallas. 1-1 one, one game, Cosmos and the Tornado. Dallas tied it up on Kevin Cutie's goal with eight minutes to go. Here's Pelé. 3.30 remaining in the first half of overtime. They'll switch ends of the field at seven and a half minute mark. Ramon Mifflin, but it's taken instead by Glenn Myernick. Myernick, number 15, Jim Ryan. Back to Tony Ballinger. Whoops, Dimitri Evans. Here come the Cosmos. Mifflin. Mifflin. Pelé. Pelé. Now we'll have another free kick here to New York. Another dangerous situation. This one is about 20 yards out. Right in front of goal. Just pushing it back there. Pelé running through there. And, well, um, I'm not sure that I would necessarily have called that quite as spectacular foul as it looked. The One, wall. two, three, four, five, six players in that wall there. Now, I was talking about Mifflin and Pelé last time, and Canalia took the kick. Let's see what's going to happen this time. Pelé, 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 stop! Cooper, let's it go! Fist it over! Kenny almost lost it. It almost slipped. And New York all Beautiful kick scored. by Pelé. Hooked over the wall, bouncing. Pelé, very good at spinning the ball like that. Cooper landing on the ball and bouncing up out of his grasp and reflex pushing it away there. Corner kick and Kenny Cooper dunked the ball. And we may have had an offside call, Paul. I'm not sure. On the previous play, maybe not on that one, though. Dallas goal kick. Took remarkable presence of mind for Cooper to make that stop. Oh, that must have been a terrible feeling for him. He's lying flat on his back in this filthy, sudden wet turf, and he sees the ball bouncing over his head into the goal. Up went his arm, and he just scooped it away. 1.53 remaining in the first half of overtime. Again, the Cosmos on the attack. Here comes New York. Mike Dillon, the defender. Dillon being guarded by Myronick. Petcher tries to head it out and does. And Ballinger comes up to get it for the, the Tornado. Nice pass by Ballinger up to John O'Hare. Slips it back, distributes it out to Neil Cohen. Cohen to Tony Ballinger. He'll probably go to Cohen and does. Neil Cohen with the assist on the tying goal. But it goes across the touchline. It'll be a New York throw in. 122 remaining in the first half of overtime. Keith Eddy, number five for New York. Kyle Rogue goes back to Mark Paul. Excuse me. We're seeing in this uh, pretty constant New York pressure in this thing. But of course, this, this is so deceptive in soccer because New York are pressing. They're getting chances, but they're not scoring. Now, Dallas, one breakaway. Don't forget, one goal is going to finish this game here. So I, I think this is still very much a 50-50 game. L.A., Kevin Cooley. And Cooley simply wanted to get rid of it. Well, he certainly did that very effectively. There's Keith Eddy with half the park to play with. <laughs> overtime, 1-1. One, one. We've got 45 seconds remaining in the first half of overtime. Watch out, here's Canalia. It's Steve Hunt out on the left side, number 11. Neil Cohen marking him. Back to Canalia, number 9. Canalia, the ever-dangerous Italian. A shot, but it's high and wide to the right. Plenty of steam, plenty of power on it, but on that occasion, uh, not much direction, I'm afraid. George Lay... That's Topic. And Topic. And they must, must be getting tired, Paul. They've been playing a long time. They've been playing a long time on very hard ground. And this has been a very fast-paced game indeed, going from end to end, with a lot of very, very hard running to be done by all the players. Pele off of Kyle Rhodes' header. And again, the pressure applied by the Cosmos. Mifflin trying to find Canalia. Nice job by Myronick. Nice kick by Petcher. And we have... That is the end of our first period of overtime. And let's look again, Paul. There's Mifflin's pass. Mifflin coming more into the game now in the second half. And Mayanek had better head that out because there's Canali behind him. He doesn't really get hold of it, but there is Petcher to complete the clearance for him. Sort of overhead volley by Petcher landing on that arm he's got a cast on. So now the teams will change ends, and we'll go into another seven and a half minutes of sudden death overtime. 
So in the mist and the gloom and the rain of East Rutherford, New Jersey, we have provided a bit of excitement this afternoon. No, I don't think there's been much gloom and despondency around this stadium this afternoon. There's been a, an electric atmosphere. We've heard the crowd chanting. And despite all this rain, there, there are still, I don't think many of these people have left. We are back to play with 7.29 remaining in overtime now. The two teams have switched ends of the field. Jim Ryan for Dallas. Back to Glenn Marnick. That's Canalia lurking ever so closely to Glenn Marnick. And now the Cosmos will control. 7.16 remaining in overtime. Here's Topic at the 35-yard line. Topic with Marnick in front of him. Canalia kicked away. Tornado will control Alan Hinton. Whoops. Kyle Road slipped and... New York gets it back. Keith Eddy with a shot. But not a very good one. Uh, it's not a very good one. There's almost a sense there that, that Keith Eddy has finally decided, well, I'm not going to spend all my time lurking about back here. I'm going to run forward and show him how to shoot. I, I don't suppose he'd be too pleased with that effort, though. 6.47 remaining in the sudden death overtime. Neil Cohen for Dallas. And if it ends at the end of the 15-minute uh, period as a tie, we will go to the North American Soccer League shootout. And, Paul, you want to give a quick explanation of what they're doing? The North American Soccer League shootout is a way of one-on-one -on -one situations between a shooter and the goalkeeper. Rather like hockey, where um, the man with the ball runs in and tries to score on the goalkeeper, and he has five seconds to do it. Steve Hunt with a shot and a nice stop by Ken Cooper. And Cooper is quickly going to get rid of it. Looks downfield for John O'Hare. O'Hare up in the air. Here comes Kyle Road, and Kyle has it. Right foot. Kyle at the danger zone. Distributes it out on the left side to Alan Hinton. Hinton looking for a teammate. Fires a shot in for O'Hare, and the stop is made by Messing. He loses control and kicks it out to the right side. Seems to be a jinx on that part of the field. That's pretty well where uh, our friend Kuba bobbled the ball just now. There's a foul by Dimitri Irvis. That'll be a free kick to Dallas in a, in a rather dangerous situation. As the ball comes over. Messing gathering it without too much trouble, but he doesn't really have hold of it. Slips out of his arms onto the ground, and again, presence of mind like Cooper, kicks it out with his foot. Alan Hinton asking, I think, uh, for the 10-yard margin there. Yeah, he says this is not 10 yards, <laughs> um, and it isn't 10 yards either. Here's Hinton. Whoops. Whistle at Bond. The whistle is blowing, and I suppose the referee is saying to Alan Hinton, you were right, they weren't 10 yards away, so uh, you're going to get another kick. No, he's not. He's saying, would you kindly listen to me? <laughs> and this is what I want done. And you go back there, and I'll go back to my business. Now, you get back to New York, you take the first row to the right. <laughs> no, the referee, he's, he's doing a good job there because he's telling the players, you know, don't, enough of this arm waving and, and everything. Let's get on with the game. All right, Hinton is ready. Here's the center by Hinton. Hinton. Oh, Rope just missed it. Rope just missed it. About a yard over the top of the goalpost. Paul, take another look. There goes the center, and there is Rote, up early, up, up above everybody. His head is firmly on the ball there. Good header, just a little bit high there. I don't know that Messing would have got that if that had been on target. This is Charlie Aitken Charlie from New York. Aitken running a little bit stumbly, looks a bit tired. Right back to Aitken, marked by Kyle Rote. Aitken in the corner. Kyle, Aitken. I think Kyle has got a free kick out of that. He kicked the ball, in fact, onto Aitken's legs, and it bounced off Aitken's legs over the goal line. So it's a free kick for Dallas. 4.47 remaining in the game. The Tornado hoping to remain undefeated in NASL play. They are looking for their third win of the year. And New York trying to go 3-1 and one on the season. They lost their opener to Las Vegas, but have come back with two consecutive wins against Team Hawaii and Rochester. Our score 1-1 with 4.30 remaining in sudden death overtime. If it ends 1-1, at the end of that period of time, we go to the NASL shootout. We may see some substitution towards the towards the end of this over time because when we come to the penalty kick situations there are certain players who are quite good at that who may not be on the field at the moment in which case uh, the coaches would want to get them on the field before the end of this uh, before the end of this thing because you cannot use a player in that situation who isn't on the field at the end Jim of the Ryan time. a shot and a save by Messi good solid shot by by Ryan uh, Messing's by Cooley was it good solid shot Messing's positioning is good though Messing is right there where the shot is Comes right to him. No trouble for Messing. Neil Cohen with the steal for the Tornado. And Kyle Road can't get hold of it. It goes across the touchline, but Dallas does have a throw in. See Aitken. the umbrellas here. At the Aitken quite content. Five seconds now. Here's Hinton. 
And the shot is saved by Messing. There we have it. Hinton running in. I think his shot might have been taken a little earlier. That, that extra touch there, I think, was probably what killed him. He allowed Messing to get too close to him, and of course, the closer in the goalkeeper is, the fewer the angles the player has. And listen to the crowd as number 10 comes on the field. Now, I've never seen Pelé take one of these sort of shots before. It'll be interesting to see what Pelé does with it, whether he keeps it low or whether he tries to get it over the goalkeeper. Kenny Cooper poised like a sprinter on his line there. And in fact, he's off his line before the whistle. Away we go. Here comes Pelé. The shot. Cooper. Cooper saved. And again, so we're at zip zip. We are. And again, I think uh, the ball pushed too far ahead by Pelé. Let's take a look at this. Uh, he's two for Cooper. He's allowed Cooper to get too near to him. Shot has obviously got to be taken earlier than that. And I think the, the pressure is on the man with the ball. I, I think the man with the ball feels... He's no idea how long five seconds is. He can't, he's not cool enough to count off five seconds as he's running in. And I think they're probably taking their shots too early. Ken Cooper and Chef Messing and Pelé in conversation down there. Now, the five seconds do not give the, the uh, goal scorer an opportunity for a second shot, right? Oh, no. Here's Which Jim Ryan. He was touched it. Here's Ryan. Well, now, what happens there, I don't know. Because that was definitely a foul by Chef Messing on Ryan. Whether they retake it. There's Messing, you'll see, he, he grabs his legs here. There are, he doesn't get the ball. But he trips Ryan. Now, whether we have to retake that or whether we award a standard penalty kick for that, seems to be a bit of a discussion going on there as to what we should do about it. Chef I think, Messing I think, has uh, his arms outstretched. Well, I don't there's, there's Keith Eddie, the captain of the Cosmos. Chef Messing, uh, well, I know what Chef Messing is saying. Chef Messing is saying, no, I didn't trip it. No, 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 no. And Dick Berg, Paul, who, uh, general manager of the Tornado, who helped originate this concept, just uh, told me that the goal is good now. That no, it, it, it definitely isn't good, or we would not see Ryan carrying on or Cooper running out there like that. I think they have disallowed that that, that will count as a turn, and it's no goal for Dallas. So here comes Ryan, down goes Messing. Does he play the man here? Well, unfortunately, we've got a goal. Looks to me like he does get his right leg there. Well, now Al Miller, Al Miller is deciding. Now, basically, what this is about, Tornado is saying, Chef Messing found our player, we should be awarded a goal. The referee, obviously, is saying, no, Chef Messing did not foul your player, you missed that shot. Therefore, well, therefore we go to the next one. And if New York score on this, they will be one goal ahead. This is a series of five, so it's not over in this first five. After that, it's, it's sudden death. Steve Hunt will take the second shot for the New York Cosmos. Well, well we've had no score at all yet. I have a feeling there'll be some comments about this whole procedure <laughs> after it's all decided. Steve Hunt has this ball closer. This is better. And another, and another great another stop good by Ken by, Yeah. And what happens if it's 0-0 zero, zero at the end of five kicks? Then it goes into 1-1. One, one. New York take, uh, Dallas take a kick, New York take a kick. If Dallas miss and New York score at that point, it's all over. Or vice versa, if Dallas score, New York don't. So they, in other words, they're in pairs after these series of five. This is the third of the Tornado kickers, Kevin Culey. Kevin Culey. Neither team has scored thus far. The North American see, soccer see league. See how far missing out. comes out. Messing now is out at about the 12-yard line, and that is Keeley it. Keeley has scored! Kevin Keeley, who appropriately enough tied the game up with eight minutes remaining, has gotten the first goal of the NASL shootout. Now, the pressure here is on Keith Eddy, the Cosmos captain. Now, you see, he takes his shot earlier here. You see the distance between him and Messing. He's got time to place that shot. Messing, perhaps, was a little slow on coming out on that one, too. Keith Eddy to take the New York kick. Keith Eddy, the New York captain, is their specialist at traditional penalty kicks. Now, what he's like at these moving penalty kicks, if I can call them that, remains to be seen. Cooper yeah. rushing out. Eddie, cool. Yes. Now, I think we got, a, we got an object lesson there from Keith Eddie on how to play this. Do not push the ball a long way ahead and run after the full speed. He had about four or five touches with that ball there. Here we see Cooper running out. Eddie is playing this very coolly. We are tied at one and one. After three kicks. Glenn Myernick is number four for Dallas. 
The kick is supposed to be taken within five seconds after the whistle blows. There's the referee and Shep Nessing, the goalkeeper, getting ready. Next to kick for New York after Myernick will be Canalia. Here comes Myernick. Myernick again taking his time a la Keith Eddy. Yes. 2-1, Dallas. Seems as though we're getting the hang of this thing now, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's look at it again. Now here we've got Giorgio Canalia coming up. Now, I think anybody watching that could clearly see that Myernick pushed that along the ground with the inside of his foot. Here's Canalia for the Cosmos. He could tie it if he gets it. The shot, high! Well, after four consecutive misses, we've had four consecutive scores. Here's Kinali. Let's see what, how he pushes it. Again, the inside of his right foot. Notice how his foot's turned out. With the inside of his foot, you're putting a lot of flat surface onto the ball, and you can direct it. Canalia has tied it up. And next for Dallas, John O'Hare, number nine. Let's see what Messing... I would expect Messing to come rushing out on this one. I don't think he's done too well coming sort of halfway on the previous two. Nope. Messing being cautious, the player being cautious too. Now Messing has done that again. Yeah, now this, this apparently will be a standard penalty kick. Here comes the argument again as we look at it one more time. There's no question about what Messing did not get the ball, but he did get the player on this. Here is, here's his dive. Nowhere near the ball. And well. So. I think we'll get the traditional penalty kick here. Where the referee is standing, just by his right foot, you can see a little white blob there. And that's the spot where the ball will be placed. There it goes. 12 yards out. Messing standing on his line. This time he cannot move until the ball is kicked. Oh, uh, that's just it. about missing. I would say, you know, a couple of inches under the bar, maybe. Now, New York. One, two, three, four, five. The final kick of this five kick series. If New York miss this, the game is over, and Dallas will win it. They will win it by a score, official score of 2-1. to one. So the pressure is really on Ramon Mifflin now. We're back now to the moving penalty kicks. This is the final Mifflin kick. Mifflin has to score this to tie the game. If he misses it, it's over, and Dallas will win it. Here comes and here comes Ken Cooper. Hey, and Cooper! Saved. Has stopped it, and the tornado is undefeated. Here comes the team. The Dallas Tornado is 3-0 and on the North American Soccer League shootout. We're going to see Mifflin's kick again here. There's not much to see here. In fact, uh, all he did was not enough on the inside of the foot. Cooper well out, gets his hand on it, pushes it aside. So that's the game. Dallas Tornado winning it by a score, an official score of 2-1. to one. Tied up 1-1 one, one during regular time. One, one of those goals counts to give them a 2-1 to one win. And there you see them, and my word are they happy. Distant replay will continue in a moment.